Oh, it has been a strange couple weeks in the field. It's been a strange morning, I can tell you. Chris Aldane, Lake Huron's growling. Get the crew. We have found refuge. Vandy, Ron Moore, Ben Oliver, and we have got a, uh, a spot. We have finally made it to. Welcome to Z Live. <laughs> Z Squared Live. Oh, 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 oh. Help me out, Chris. Oh, God, she's still hot. Oh, she's still hot. Oh, come here, come here. Come here, girl. Oh. You got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, look at that one. Hey, look at that you know one. what? You know what? You know what just happened? You know what just happened? The show started. There's one. Oh, that a boy. Nice. That a boy. On the jig. Look, it's so gnarly. Ooh. Look, it's so big head. Can you touch that for me? Huh? That's a big one. Come here. Get that hog. <laughs> uh, I'm wet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zona's awesome carnival. <laughs> Woo. I mean, that fish is hot right there. You are watching Zona Live. Presented by Trocar. Absolutely the world's strongest fish hooks. We, uh, we went about, number one, we apologize. We're a little late to breakfast. Um, we went about 10 miles down the lake where Chris and I actually shot a show on Sunday and it was just too bad. It was it was so awful out there and uh, we were going to try to go right back where we caught them. We caught probably 30 or 40, but it is gassing out there. But this little spot right here along the Great Lakes, there's discharges all over and in October there could be magic in the back. This uh this certain this certain discharge. I have fished tournaments with Vandy in here back in our early early twenties. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't, you know, this is our plan B here, but this has got a lot of potential. Everyone knows in early fall, fish love current, you know, and targeting smallmouth here on Lake Huron, there's current ripping in the back of this ripping. little pocket here. Ripping. You see where that water's blasting back there. There's some bad stuff's gonna happen here in a minute. But we're gonna kind of take our time. We're gonna take our time and uh, feel everything out, make sure. But what's interesting is this exact, this discharge right here, um, you gotta be here kinda at daylight and the problem, you see that barge right there, if you turn around that barge, we, we were fearing that that barge was coming in here this morning, but he didn't, he went in a, in a different slip. But what's interesting is this, this certain discharge it's a little spot that I take Hunter and Jacob this time of year because not only can you catch a few in here, you, I mean, big ones get in this thing. Really big. Looks like we've got some scattered bait cruising through here as well. So I'm gonna start out with a jerk bait. I see Zona's working it along the bottom here. He's throwing a jig and a tube, it looks like. But we're just getting to where that, that current's ripping across these rocks. But gang, I'm not gonna lie. I am not gonna lie. If you'd have been with us this morning out on the big lake, <laughs> oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. I mean, growling, growling bad. But what's interesting is you'll get them, you'll get, you'll catch them on the inside of the boom. You'll catch them on the inside and the outside. The other day, Chris and I checked this for only probably 30 minutes. We caught them on both sides of it. But what's funny is you'll, you'll go through. No. Yeah. The current spot there. You'll, uh, you'll go through with a rotation of baits 
You won't get bit, won't get bit. And then you'll come back with a different rotation and start catching them. And the wind is supposed to, the wind is supposed to gradually throughout today, it's supposed to lay down. And we might go to one spot in an hour or two that uh, could be could be doable for us. We're coming up on the juice now. Yeah. <laughs> you see that bush up there, that tree hanging over? There's stuff going on right there. Yes. Ronnie, by the way, tell everybody, Z Live, sponsored by Trocar. We got gift packages. Dial us in. Yes. To be entered to win Zona Lives prize packages from Trocar, you just got to log on to Twitter and ask your questions. It doesn't have to be a specific question answered by Zona or Zaldane, but just asking a question gets you entered to win. Hashtag Zona Live and hashtag sweepstakes on your tweets, and you'll get those entered into the prizes. But also, Comment on the Zona's Awesome Fishing page, Facebook page, and Bassmasters Facebook, Facebook page. You'll be able to comment your questions there using those hashtags as well. And Zona, you got a bunch of Trocar stuff to give away. Grand, oh, yeah. First, the grand prize winner gets $200 uh, approximate value of Trocar hooks. That's a lot of hooks uh, for your tackle box. And then there's going to be a first prize winner that gets $150 prize pack ahead, from Trocar. Yep. And then there'll be two second bit. prize okay. winners. Uh, with Zona gift packs and assorted things as well. So a lot of prizes to win, four hours of fun fishing between these two guys. Uh, all you got to do is ask a question to get entered to win. So oh, no. log on to Twitter and Facebook and get your questions answered. Ronnie, we're going to tackle a bunch of questions today too, aren't we? Yes, we yeah. are. Not only what's going on in what, Michigan what, what with golf, but on? just what's going on what's anywhere, going on? you know? <laughs> Well, there's a, oh, ho, 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 ho. see, that's where it'll start, right up there. Almost felt like he grabbed the weight. Mm. Uh, uh, no doubter, though. What's funny about this certain, this certain discharge right here, they started coming in here about, about three weeks ago, I came up and checked it and caught a couple. There he is. Got him. Oh. Uh-huh. There's a bunch right there. How good does that feel this morning? Yeah, you know, it's been a weird couple weeks. <laughs> we all yeah. good. We just want to hold back from that deal okay. right there, Chris. 10-4. Oh! Oh! Yeah, bud! I mean, dad gum. Oh, my God. Good old stud. <laughs> that is a big one. It's a good one. Oh! Uh! Yeah. The party just started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that one right there. <laughs> the thing is in here, what's funny is, is the day, ooh, I just barely had him. Barely had him. We'll keep a couple for pictures for Ronnie today. Throughout the day, look at that right there. How about it, man? Um, throughout the day, you just keep showing them Showing them different stuff. <laughs> oh no, Tada! Zackers. Um, Zackers. <laughs> Throughout the day, just keep rotating. Nicely done. Thank you. Let me show you Stop what I got. On. Yeah. Little swimmer. Good job, bud. Oh, oh it's a great big one, isn't it? 
Is it? Oh, so, oh, he came oh off. no! Surface walker. No, Barely no, no, got no, no. It. Barely no. got it. Ooh, that was a big dark one. It barely came up. Really? And, yep, barely got it. You know what? If we're going to do that, let me throw some artillery at yeah. him. Yeah. Watch this. Hey, Chris, I'm not going to lie. What you got? Why show him one? Uh oh. Uh oh. It's never too early for it's that. It's never too early. <laughs> Especially this time of year. Uh huh. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow. Was it a big one? It's a four nice. pounder. Yeah. yeah, big dark one too. Really? Yeah. Mamba. Yep. Barely came up and got really? it and just started surface walking. Uh-huh. There's a good one. Got a boy. Oh, yes. my gosh. Uh-huh. Like swimming right towards I me. I mean, want me to help you? I got it. I got it. Sure? Oh. Yeah, I got it. Good job, Chris. Good job. Oh. The fun size good one. Good job. And they fight hard in here. They're fighting that current. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, it is. You got him? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh. Yeah, that that's a good one. Come here. Well, that's a good one. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah! Show that nice, to Wes. Nice, fatty. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Man, that's a pretty fish. Good Again, job, Again, we got dude. Lake Huron right behind us. Huge waves out there. Nice little plan B spot. But being October 2nd, all those fish are coming off the lake feeding up right here shallow it's a nice one should we let him go or keep him for pictures later yeah just let's hang on to a couple yeah we'll hang on to a couple i think it's going to get a little oh that felt good man <laughs> i needed this that felt good good feels start like, feels like there's a little outcropping right there yeah for those of you that fish the Tennessee River, you know, beneath those dams on Pickwick or, you know, any of those lakes, they love hanging out just behind those rocks. Oh, that wind is still gassing, but we're, we're good in here. We're good. we're good. We're good. We're safe in here. It is so, it is so mean out there. Pay attention. Pay attention. Anyway, so what we're doing, little baits like this. That's a baby Z2 right there. Little number two trocar drop shot hook, quarter ounce weight, quarter ounce weight. But we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna yeah, we'll you get got some, to. Got we'll it. get some jig bites. Yep, yep. And what's funny is, like like I was saying when we started, what'll happen is we're gonna get a we'll, we'll get a bunch of bites really in the flow up there, but they sit on this bend the most they really hang on that band and you don't want to get in a hurry and just go blasting up in there you just want to ease around go ahead go ahead go ahead you got a drop shot on Z. yeah yeah probably cast it over you there sorry big and yeah no 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 oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. this is unreal this is unreal oh my god big one <sighs> He was right uh, under the boat. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> and bait will come in here. Alewives and little shiners for the next month. And these dudes will follow them. Wow. Uh, wow. Sweet landing. And we'll go through here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Just a nice one. We'll let that one go. But the bait in here that they're eating, really, really, really small. 
it's about two inches long that they're eating. But we put a couple, we, could, we put a couple in the live well the other day, and uh, they're also spitting up crawdads real hard too. But I remember the first time, the first time I brought the camera crew up here years ago, cameraman West behind the camera, it was one of those days like this where it was just gas and you're like, oh my, look at his Zachers, look at Zachers. Oh, look at look him. Look at him. Look at him, little me. That is hey, cute dude. as a button. Hi, Zachers. <laughs> um, well, he's having a time, isn't he? That's just full of piss and vinegar. Full, look, he's got a little hole right there. He does. Just cute as a button. Um, but there was a day like this where you went out there like we did this morning and any of you Great Lakes dudes knows. Look at Downing. that, right there. Oh, um, little dude. Any of you Great Lakes dudes knows, you go out there, you're just beating your head in. And we got down to where I thought we were gonna do Z Live this morning. Um, and the water was just chocolate milk, just total chocolate milk. And I knew we were either gonna have to call it off or pray that barge didn't come in here but uh years ago we had a day like this and, and cameraman west it was almost a washout day and i said let's have a crew day let's have a crew day where everybody can catch them and have fun and ah! and uh gosh we came in here and caught i don't know 80 like that See, the closer he's getting to that turn. <laughs> I'm trying to take my time. I want to, let's take our time and catch every single one out of here. Oh, I just had one bounce the fire out of that thing. Donk. It's the second one that felt like a weight bite. I cannot believe they are not biting that. Still a little cloudy this little morning, bit, so bit. you know your jerk baits, your higher running swim baits may take a while for them to get on that. Ron, you good? Good. I mean, good, good. Got to keep alternating through the bait, you know. You know there's a pile of them down there. The mess of them is in that right where it bends. That's where there is nasty, naughty going on. I'll fish out just a hair, Chris, where you can really get that sliding. Like right there. That's it. Right? Yeah. There he is. Oh. Ho, ho. <laughs> there he is. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna have to come on this Dude, side. How many are down there? Hundreds? It came off a rock and just Did went. Did it? Donk. That might be, might be one we're looking for. I can't see him. My kids are watching this, I guarantee, in school right now. They're like, I caught one there, Dad. Ooh. Just ripping in that current. Is that a big one? Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, wow. That's, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how about that? Come here, buddy. Good one. Good one. Good fish. Wow.
Wow. But we're going to catch a giant in here. We're going to catch a great big one. Chris, I'll take inside for a little bit. I'll go inside the boom. Okay. Because that'll catch them all day. And what's funny is, as I am a hot mess, Ron Moore, <laughs> what's funny is, is as the day goes on and the light gets the kind of sucked towards the bank, but if you pan towards that seawall right there, in all the years, you're like, wow, if we're catching them right here, I can't wait to get to that seawall. I've never caught a bass in all the years I've been here on that seawall. It's all been right here. Oh, you're up in it? Yeah, okay. go ahead. You want that, me to stay out? That, that's going to be the huh. dangerous cast all day. I mean, imagine hooking a five or six pounder on that side of that boom. It'll be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I got to re-rig here, fellas. Okay. I'm just going to hold this back yeah, until yeah, you're... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Ooh, I love this Seaguar Tatsu collection you got here, Mark. Dude, they are eating that thing. Have no idea how big that is. <laughs> That's one we want, I think. That's a big one. Oh, no! Oh, it, oh, it was a big one. <laughs> He'll bite again. Oh, this is unreal. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to retire All right, this I'm a disaster. Okay. Okay. That was almost five. And they'll just kind of, if you pan down that, they'll pull up on it, on those rocks, and just fade down. That was a big one. That was like a big it. one. Darn it. Chris, you need anything? No, I'm good, man. I just tied up some 10 pound Tatsu leader here. Oh my Stop. gosh. They're so loaded right there, dog. Okay. Look at this naughty little thing. Too hot. Troke our finesse hook with a there you go. with a nail weight in the bottom. Stands straight up, but it comes through everything. My little buddy Seth Fighter showed me that gig a while back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh wow. man. Wow. How many are sitting right yeah, there? Exactly. It's a good one. I'm gonna fall back. Okay. Vandy, I'm gonna fall back. We are gonna drop a cap in them. Yeah. Not a giant though, not a giant. Not a giant. Nice one. Yes, sir. What a fishing hole. No, not a giant. I'm going to show this rig real quick as soon as I get him in. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> yeah. Let me show this rig real quick. It's so cool. Look at him. Perfect, man. No hook holes. 
All right, let me show. This rig is awesome. There you go. Looks like we have started Zone Alive this morning. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie, the fishing gods tested us the first 90 minutes of the day. Vandy was trying to trying to keep in all his profanity out there in the in the big lake. Okay. I want to catch one on that jerk bait. I cannot believe they're not biting that thing yeah, right now. They will at some point. Okay, so what we're doing, what I'm doing with this, this is a really cool largemouth deal, cool largemouth deal or a smallie deal, okay? Everybody knows how cool and awesome a Ned rig is, all right? Um, what I'll do is I'll take a four inch Ocho, okay? And I'm gonna take an eighth or a 3 16 ounce Nico weight. And one of the keys is you got to put, sorry, my hands aren't, you got to put a little glue on it to keep it in there. And we're going to go right in the bottom of the Ocho. Right in the bottom. Just like that, okay? Just get it as st straight as you can. Bite the top off. Bite the top off. And then I'm taking a 2 aught trocar finesse worm hook and go in through the top make sure I don't got no zebra mussels hit it and the great thing about it is it'll there's oh, one yeah? jerk bait yep uh -uh. oh my oh, gosh big one. oh gosh oh, that's oh a it's big a, one that is a big bait. one yeah it is oh you coming on this side look at outside? that one Woo. oh gosh I'll go to the right side okay. here okay let me get some stuff out of your way wow Wow, wow, wow. That's a good one. That is a big one. Let me get all this out of your way, Chris. All right. No I'm problem. giving you a landing strip. Look at that thing. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Giant. <laughs> Smoke that jerk bait. Want me to get them? Yeah. Watch yep, those yep, hooks. Yep, those yep, are yep, TK300s. Yep. They, yep, yep, yep. they are sharp. They are sharp. Oh, careful, Z. Oh, gosh, careful. <laughs> I know. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah! <laughs> oh, you gave me those Trocar TK300s last but, night, and that is why. Hold on, hold on. Okay, careful. He has a... Careful. <laughs> hold on. Wow. I have, okay. got, <laughs> I have got your jerkbait in a very I compromising got, area right I've now. Got that Look at that one! <laughs> yeah. oh, the, oh my gosh! I mean, that's a fatty. Wow! Oh, that thing is. Look at that! How thick it is! Look at that! Yes! We kidnapped him for an hour. Smoked it. What is happening? Dude, that's a big one, yeah, man! That's a good one. Nice. Sorry to interrupt your rigging program. No, that's there. fine. Yeah. Yep. Look at that one. And it's a little deeper, like eight to 10 right there. Deeper diving jerk bait, Vision 110 plus one. Trocar TK 300, size four. Not coming off. Good one. I was gonna say, man, if something doesn't bite a jerk bait right. in here. Right, right. I'll stay tight, okay? Go ahead, go ahead. We got all day. We really do. We really got all day. That was sick. I'm gonna go inside so you can have yeah. out, okay? Yeah, 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 sure. Talking about golden stop it. Oh, I know. Did it really? Did it? Yeah. This could turn into a mess. That's a dangerous cast yeah. there. That's where they're sitting. Uh -huh. That throw.
I mean... <laughs> it's, uh... That's, that's what's wild about this deal. I was telling Chris, I came up here, my boys fished a college classic about a month ago, and I slid in here and looked around, and uh, I got one or two bites. But what's funny is, and Vandy, Vandy, camera bow driver Vandy knows this, this certain discharge we're in, they get here like that. They get there, you know, and what's funny is you'll catch a bunch, like we're catching this morning, nice three and a half pounders, and then all of a sudden, Kong, you'll catch a, a five or a six. Now, a month ago, were these fish here, do you figure? Not, not like, not, 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 not to stacked. this numbers. Okay, you know, I gotcha. caught a dozen, but what, what's funny was when they're, when they're not really here good, you end up catching little guys, little, little, little knuckleheads. Something might happen right, right there, there friend. Yeah. Um, but once you let, you know, once they know the cops are here, you just got to keep going through and rotating and. They'll eat a stupid tube in here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That is so awesome. All right, I'm gonna throw one in there. Yep. I'm gonna it. slide it in. Get, yep, get right there. You know the cast. That's it. I'm gonna pair I'm gonna try out. Open water, maybe they're chasing bait. You almost don't want to, you almost don't even want to, when you're throwing bottom bounce and stuff and current for smallies, you almost don't even want to move, you don't want right. to give it a lot of action. You almost want that that current flow to, to let it. But we're sitting right here, we're in 21, 21 foot, so you're looking at a, a sheer drop where they'll just slide up and down all day long. It's gonna keep a big bait honest, a really big bait. Really big. I'll throw a big Z2, I'm gonna have to put on a different weight. Let me do that. Ron, are you getting your qu your questions ready for us here in a little bit? What time we got? Oh, we're getting, it's 9.34. We're, oh, gosh. It feels like it's been an eternity. But yeah. that's yeah. No, it really has been. Huh? <laughs> it went from a train wreck to uh, yeah. a slug fest real quick. If you're cool with some questions, you guys ready for a couple? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll start with Twitter. Now, you're not going to cross that controversial line right now, are you, Ron? <laughs> I, I thought that's what this was all about. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we, we're going to start it. We're going to start it on Twitter. Okay. Carter Cox wants to know, Zona, what's your favorite way to catch bass in Michigan during the winter months when there's no ice? So I guess I guess between now and from when they get that roof over their head. Oh, that's Carter Cox. You know, what, what what's interesting is is I, I, we were, Chris and I were talking about that yesterday. We were driving from one lake to another one. And Carter, number one, I love that question. Number two, I use two baits. I use a, a homemade blade bait, you know, a Silver Buddy style deal that you know, Neil, Neil pours them, um, a bunch of us. I mean, uh, I think that's one of the best baits. And I think the other one is, is slow winding a small three, two, five swim bait yeah. on a 516's head, slow. I think that's one of the best ways to catch them. I like that question. Uh, another one similar similar to that, I guess, time frame wise, Eric Lytle, hopefully I said his last name right, asked, when does that fall smallmouth smash fest end 
here in Michigan. You know, I, does it go all the way up until Man, they get that roof? It's a good that, question. That's a tough one to answer. That's a loaded question. What's his name? Eric Lytle. Eric Lytle. That's a hard question to answer because some of, you know, to me, October 1st to Halloween, you're, you're not going to miss it. You know what I mean? It's when that, uh, the, the water temp up here was three weeks ago was 74, and now it's, you know, 56 to 59. Um, so you're not going to miss it if you go from October 1st to Halloween. But if the weather uh, lets you still get out between Halloween and Thanksgiving, it could be incredible, but you got to endure brutal conditions. This is a question for both of y'all. In general, what's your biggest swim bait fish you've ever caught? I guess, and if you know, biggest largemouth, biggest smallmouth, but he just said swim bait fish in general. Oh man, let me answer that one. Yeah, I, go. Man, back when swim bait, before swim bait fishing was cool and a thing, man, it must be 10, 12 years ago. I was in high school back then, but all those trout fed lakes in Northern California were just, I mean, just there to, oh, there for you to pick. Uh, I've caught a 14 oh, out on a home oh, lake oh. On, on a big eight inch swim bait. Two days later, I went back, caught a 13. Like four days later, I went and caught like a 10 and an 11. You know, it's, those were the good days of swim bait fishing. And I'll I've tell caught you, one on a four and a half inch swim bait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> three pounder, three pounder. That swim bait fishing's fun, man, because I mean, a lot of times you go out and not catch anything, but then the very next day you catch a 10, 11, 12 pounder. And I said it earlier this year at Kentucky Lake, it's very seldom we go to lakes on the Bassmaster Elite Series you that you can that. throw a giant yeah. swim bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, that Kentucky Lake tournament earlier this year was one of those times. You know, it's not about a lot of times tournament fishing, not about racking up as many as you can. It's about targeting those big ones for eight hours a day. Know what I'm saying? Z, what are you up there? Drop shot? I'm going to throw a big Z2, yeah? Okay. Go. What was yours? What's that? What was yours? Biggest wind bait fish? Yeah. Oh, I, I would say it was... Uh, honestly, like a six or seven inch swim bait. I mean, I, dude, if I'm throwing something the size of a tennis shoe... Yeah. I think I did catch a bull shark in Key West on one <laughs> with Wes. That was a uh, shout I'm out to... I'm not going to lie, man. A, a six-inch swim bait to me is huge. Yeah, oh, like yeah. up here, it's big, right. That one was Vincent Carson. Shout out to him. Didn't say his name to begin with. Um, here's one for y'all from Facebook, from the Bassmaster Facebook page. This question was asked by, <laughs> bear with me, Django Slapnutsky. Okay. Wow. All right. He wanted to know, does it take more skill to catch 32 pounders or five fish that weigh four pounds? Well, I guess it's all a personal preference. Yeah. I think that's all a personal preference. Depends on the depends on De the fishery, right? Depends on the lake, depends on how much practice time you get. I mean, it really does. I just want to set the hook, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to me, I, I love going out and pre-fishing and trying to find the spots that no one else could find and getting the biggest bite on those spots. Whether you're, you know, casting a giant swim bait uphill and looking for that quality, I know I've got eight hours to do it. You know what's bizarre though, today's a microcosm of it, because uh -huh. we have a lake right down the road. We could catch 52 pounders on live, <laughs> but we went for broke. So. What else you got, Ronnie? Okay. Yeah. We'll probably ask one more question, and that's from your Facebook page, Zona. But for fans at home, maybe missed the beginning of this show, we will do uh, answer fan questions each hour. Send them in via Twitter. You can hashtag Zona Live and hashtag Sweepstakes to be entered to win the prizes from Trocar. A couple different grand prize, first place prize, second place, place prize giveaways. Um, and also on Facebook, on Zona's page, and Bassmaster. So last question um, for this hour. Jeremy Kent from your Facebook page, Zona, wants to know, with all the new baits on the market, all the new techniques and different creations, do you guys have 
a specific tackle box dedicated to old school lures? And if so, maybe open that box and unveil maybe a couple of your old school favorites. I think I think every fisherman has that box. Good question, Jeremy. I don't have it in the boat. <laughs> if Andy's around, he'll just steal all that crap. Um, yeah, I got one at home that that you know my kids are pretty big into taking a lot of it. <laughs> but most of mine would are our hand carved crankbaits from yep. from friends. Yeah. Yeah, that, that old tackle box smell, yeah. you know, all those old lures have that real particular smell. Yeah. And I've got a lot of old wiggle warts, you know, of course those are real popular, but anything handmade, old, old balsa, no doubt. That was we good. Huh? That was good. Unscathed in the first hour, that was good. Say it again. The questions. Yeah. The answer that so was good. So far. Yeah. yeah. Never know where it'll go today. <laughs> you never know. Now I will tell everybody that's kind of started with us today, um, just in case you're just joining us, we got pushed off Lake Huron pretty bad this morning. No, no, not pretty. We got we got beat up at seven o'clock to eight thirty. I mean it was huh? That American flag was stood straight up, man. Yeah. We came out this morning. We came out of the hotel and went, oh, no. Um, but we had this as a little, little backup plan. But throughout this morning, we will end up making a decision if we go for broke out there yep. again. There he is. Uh oh. Double, double. It's amazing. We just threw in that deal. That's a big one. Yeah. This is this is a big Mark's one. Mark's big. Yep. Stay hooked. <sighs> just stay hooked. Come sorry, on, sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Get out of your way. Wow! 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 Yeah. Good one? Yeah. Come in. Oh. You want that drag to slide. I'm using I'm Woo. using 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown in flash green where you can see that line to an eight pound leader. The problem in cuffs, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. Ah. That's a pretty one. That is a stripes stud. on that one. <laughs> Hold on. I don't like how that one's hooked. We'll let him go. I don't like how he's hooked. There we go. He's good. Look at that. That is a tank. Not a hook hole in them. Like a lot of these are freshies where they're just starting to get here. Oh my gosh. But what's funny is like that cast that we just made, we have been making that cast for 15 minutes and right. then you, don't, you right. catch a double. Right. And that just tells you fall is here and they're moving yeah. in here and feeding, moving around. That's it's the insane whole insane if you think about it. Whole gig right there. Little baby Z2, real small. It's uh we shot a show, Hunter Jacob and I shot a show on St. Clair, but I use a small hook, a little number, number two troker drop shot. And I actually went down to a quarter ounce instead of a three ace, where it kind of lets that current from that pipe up there just naturally push it. Get up there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dude, let me uh let me keep that jig honest real quick on the inside.
We have not got one bite on the inside. No, we haven't. Not one. Oh. Who? Oh. Fun morning so far. Fun morning. You tested us. You tested our resolve. I think the last two weeks have tested everybody, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> been one for the books. Yeah, it's been something for the books. It's been one for the books. Boys, we got like four or five Elite Series pros a tad jealous. Huh? I said there are a couple of Elite Series pros texting me a tad jealous of y'all this morning, so you've accomplished the <laughs> It goal. might get better. It's great <laughs> therapy, I'll tell you that much. Working through some abandonment issues. Oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> jig bite. Oh, do that again. <laughs> I'm gonna hold this rag sure. here. Those fish we caught yesterday Bring out it. on the lake were spitting up crawdads, so that jig's a good call. And that's the thing in the fall too, a lot of people, you know, misconception is they only eat bait fish, only eat bait fish in the back of pockets. Not true, they'll eat anything they can get yeah. their hands on. Really? Uh, yep, little dude. Let's have another one. Little guy. That there, I'm, this one bit the drop swimmer. Got like a little 16th ounce drop shot weight. I just got bounced yep. three times on that jig. Gosh! Just a little dude. But let me just show you what I'm throwing real quick, guys. Super, super light drop shot weight. That's like a, I don't know, an eighth ounce maybe, 16. Size one, troll car drop shot hook. And then a little mega bass hazardong shad, little three incher, or and just nose hooking it. And I call this drop swimming, where I just nose hook and just swim it down there. Just keep it moving, let the current move it. It's not like a traditional drop shot where I'm sitting there shaking it, and not moving the weight. In this current, I'm just sweeping it across, and basically keeps that that little swim bait, you know, 12 inches off the bottom. And those big smallmouth love it. I don't want to go up there and get that. Yeah. No way. All right, go ahead. Uh huh. All right. Good start, fellas. Good start. Good start. Good audible. Good audible. One of the things in here, they're not just, Chris was just talking about it, they're not just feeding on bait. Um, there was a lot of crawdad stuff going on uh -huh. in here too. A lot of crawdad stuff happening. See that. But a lot of the inland lakes up where we're at, we're near Alpena, a lot of the inland lakes have been pounded with pounded with uh, tournament pressure, you know, the last couple weeks. And Chris and I have just tried, <laughs> I hate to say it, we bunkered in out here because there's just been nobody fishing. Yeah. There might be tomorrow. <laughs> um, But the inland, the inland lakes are, they're warmer right now. Vandy went and checked a couple deals and we went to, up to Burton Mullet yesterday, which is one of the real big fish lakes around here. And that water was still, eh, you know, it was like 60. And it needs another, you know, it needs another solid two weeks. Ronnie, what are you laughing at over there? I'm just laughing that Russell, one of the cameramen that comes to Zona Live sometimes, is saying that he's sitting outside of his house charging his phone with an extension cord because he got skunked in his house somewhere, and it's it's unbearable. He has so. a skunk in his house? Yeah, it happens. Under it, around it, something. Never. <laughs> Is 
Zachers the muskrat. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, I miss that little dude. I haven't seen Zachers in a while. Every now and then we'll get this residual kind of, these waves, yeah, you know, coming push. off the main lake. I mean, look at this. I mean, we're... Um, and we we still haven't worked up to the to the to the juice in here. We'll do that in the next hour. But uh, again, sorry for being an hour late this morning. It was uh, it was hairy. It was actually the point you start to worry about the crew and worry about little Ron. You don't want your parents getting mad at me, right? <laughs> There's a reason they 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 did a song for this lake, right? Yeah. The Edmund Fitzgerald. I mean, there's a wreck right outside of this canal. Just know that when I come to these shoots, yeah. I call my parents for permission, and they're totally cool with me being in your hands. It's all good. I don't know that they would have this morning, Ron. No. Hey. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And you think about it, about 20, 25 miles straight out from this spot. It's like 672 yeah. feet deep. I mean, think about that. When an east wind blows overnight, all that water gets pushed into us, and we woke up to it, and it was right in our faces. Hey, Z? Yo! I think people were really wanting Zone Alive, and they were upset about the one hour because they have been sending in questions after questions. So are you cool with a couple more before the break? I am cool. And not only that, just tell the folks that are upset that we were an hour late. We too were upset. Yes, <laughs> they're they're were. not mad at you. Okay. They just love you guys so much. They're uh, they were they were upset. They they woke up and had to wait an extra hour. It was a stressful eight o'clock hour. <laughs> this Go is ahead, one Ron. that this is one that relates to to both of you, I guess. Uh, from your pay your Facebook page, Zona, Tony Hinkey. Wants to know he's a, he's a father of two daughters. He said, "Do you see more women getting into fishing at the professional level, higher up in the future? Uh, you know, especially with high school fishing and all that. Like getting the ladies more involved in, in the bigger tournaments." Got him. Got to come off. Come off. Ugh. That current, man. They swim towards you in that current. It's hard to keep up with them. I'm going to let Chris answer that yeah. question. Yeah, I'll answer Karen, that one. Karen used to be big time. She she liked to flip mats <laughs> and uh, buck brush down in Texas, but she just gave it up when we met. <laughs> I'll answer that one because my wife is involved with fishing, and I, I have to say over the last three, four, five years, women in fishing has become cool, you know, with social media and high school and college programs with those opportunities. Um, they're right there and in the crease, right in that pinch. Yep. yep. So yeah, I think it's growing for your two daughters. You know, it's it's definitely an avenue that is worth you know striving for, worth Ooh. excelling in. Ooh. Big one. Nice one. That's so wild. That is a. Ooh. You know, one of the things that I saw this year, the boys were fishing. The boy, oh. ah! The boys were fishing college tournaments, and you know, you'd see two or three or four girls fishing college tournaments. Ah! I thought that was that was honestly one of the funnest things to funnest isn't a word, but it's uh, to see that to see girls in their late teens, early twenties fishing tournaments. Uh oh, I got a mess. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, man. If you notice something that's going on, there's a little thing transpiring here. Is, is, you'll make casts, make casts. And that's one thing to, to really remember in current. And, and when I started, like I look at this, I know it sounds nuts. But I look at that current like I look at a river. And when I used to fish tournaments with, with Vandy back in the 90s, I used to hate rivers. Uh, because what was funny to me, I'm like, man, especially when we get up there, I'm like, how do they live in that water moving that fast? And what happens is they'll use some sort of an object, some sort of an object to pull behind and just sit there and wait 
for something to come by. And you can make a cast, a cast, a cast, and it doesn't flush, it doesn't flush through the right way, it doesn't come through the right way, and all of a sudden you'll make a cast where they'll where they'll yep. ignite. There could be one behind a rock the size of a baseball or a, a basketball, and if you cast to the right side of it, it won't bite. But you cast to the left side of it, just 10, 12 inches over, it'll bite. So that's why you always see in you know tournament fishing in spots like this. I mean, you just repetitive cast, repetitive cast, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna get a little dangerous you here know on what, the you inside know what, boom. What, and what, another thing that's funny about about smallmouth and largemouth in, in current like this is how how many will get behind one object you know you envision it in your head that there's you know one or two fish and there could be you know 20 behind an object I'm starting That's to think. That's spot right I'm there. I'm starting to think about going out to that little North Shore deal. Oh yeah. I, I think I think hashtag Zona Live's trending worldwide right now. But another thing that is yeah. Well, I'll hold one sec. Little, little dude. Say it again. I said other than. Other than Zone Alive in general trending, everyone's wanting to know what's the deal with Chris Zaldane's orange thumbnail right now. During, uh, no, I will tell you, during the, during, he started painting his nails when we were going to call off the whole day. When we were going to call off the whole day because the entire lake was blown out. I got bored. He's under you, Vandy. There's another one, little dude. Little guy. Yeah, Zona's got some orange spike it in here. And I was applying it to a tube bait earlier this morning. A little piece got on my nail. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I can't I can't deal with that. Let's just go ahead and it fill the whole though. thing in. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you could I mean you could have been our friend Dave Mercer, right, Zona, and just uh, spilt it all over the boat. Right? The, the did, yeah. it, no, the best part is when Mercer did that, we were taping the show actually up here. And I watched him do it, and I went, "Bro, what are you doing?" He's like, "Well, what?" And it was from it was from that lid, all the way back to the seats. Oh. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get right under your foot, Chris. Thanks, bud. Uh, here's a fishing technique setup related question Z and and Chris you're probably gonna have the same answer to it but uh, Nick Dennis wants to know what are the best tips on preventing line twist with a drop shot yeah um, probably the, the easiest tip man there's a lot of ways to do it I've seen guys like Kevin Van Dam go straight fluorocarbon put a swivel you know 18 24 inches above his line that's one way to prevent it but I would say whether you're using braid to floral like I'm using or straight floral like Mark's using. One of the biggest things um, you could do to prevent line twist, drop shotting, is to make sure, I mean, and this is where detail comes in, make sure that when you thread that drop shot hook through the nose of the worm, make sure it's absolutely straight. It can't be off two or three degrees because when you reel it in, it comes back like this. Always test um, when you nose rig a drop shot, when you rig it on there, drop it in the water next to the boat and reel it in. And if it comes back straight, you won't have line twist. If it comes back like this, right. re-rig it because your line's gonna twist all day long. Oh, you wanna make that jig work, don't you? Dude, they play volleyball with that but, jig yeah, all yeah, morning. Yeah, and you know when you connect, it's gonna be a giant. I know. Say it again, Wesley. Folks, again, sorry for the uh, one hour delay, but a fruitful first hour of Zone Alive. Don't go anywhere. And we're gonna ask the folks at home to help us make a decision on our fishing today. Yeah. Do we stay in an hour or two? Or do we roll coming back in a minute? Good job, Ron. Look at him! That is cute as a button. <laughs> oh.
How about that? Come here, buddy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is a strike stud. No, that's fine. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
Clapper's like, I'm gonna tell you, I'd have left about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> I, I, I'd got out of that stupid spot. You, I mean, really, you guys are catching three and a half, which ain't bad. It, it, it ain't bad, you know. <laughs> but I mean, heck, you're on Lake Huron, you might as well go catch a big one. We got company coming in. We got company rolling in. Oh no. Dude, that is Hunter and Jacob's college friends. I'm I not know kidding. who that is. I am not kidding. It's Hunter and Jacob's friends. I know who that is. Dude, those kids catch them. They do. They catch them. They are college fishing fanatics, if I remember. Dude, I'm going to make one of them feel awkward and get them in that boat. And we're going to start interviewing know. them. <laughs> I don't know if it is, Z. It's very, very similar. It is. It is. All right, I'll be ready when we get up towards this flow. Yeah. They're, they're harmless. <laughs> no one will look at them. Good morning. Good morning. That's awesome. That's beautiful. That's awesome. All right, Bubba. Is the wind calming down a little bit? Or is, I, I think we the just wind back? is calming down. It, it is. I think it uh, is. I really do. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Oh, dang it! It's tricky, man. They're tricky in that current. Dude, you feel it coming over a rock and it right. just goes conk, conk. And then they swim towards you. Right through there. There he is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Little, little, little. Little, dude. Little, little. Neil, I'm going to tell you, if them boys are coming in here to get some hot apple pie, you play block. <laughs> Those are good kids right there. Really good. At least one of them is. <laughs> What's funny about this spot that we're on right here, since we started, and our numbers are really good, and we got some really, really quality fish that we've caught, is, yeah, small? I don't know yet. Huh? Little dude. Little dude? Little guy. Subtle bite. Real yeah. Subtle. But as we go through this, what'll happen is, We'll go through it and we'll come back up it and they'll reload behind cameraman Wes. That's been the magic so far today right there. A little Strike King Z2. But as you go through this and you condition them and you teach them, uh, you'll condition them. You just really kind of just got to switch up colors on them and start showing them different stuff. I mean, it's the kind of gig where you're around, you're around hundreds in here. That's probably going to be a bass right there, Mark. What's that there? That cast you just made. Oh, I went to the big meat. I went big. At the big yeah. Z2. Dude, they just busted right back there. Really? They just, I'm not kidding. Not kidding. Those kids are going to pick up a rod here shortly. You got to watch that tall one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but don't think that short one ain't shifty either. There's that big rock yep. you've been hanging out on. All right. 
Is that wind laying? Yeah, I think it is. Is it? It's got a lot of west to it now. I could, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that a dangerous one? Yo. I, I'm not scared to try to go out there and go big. I, I mean, know you're not. You're the zookeeper. We know. Big one. Big That's one. A better one. Ooh. That's so wild. You oh. made, we, we made 10 casts yes, to that thing. Right. Just a nice one, not a big one. Uh, come here, buddy. Do you have one? Oh, I no. thought you had one. Okay. A little better. Is it? Yep. Uh, well, let's see. There's no shortage of action, that's for no, sure. No, this is fun. Ooh. Oh, yeah. One of those <laughs> yeah, fall lake here. Look at that rod just uh, digging. And there's no telling how far these fish have come from. You know, they spend all summer out on the big lake and come in here to feed. So you know they're strong. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one, man. Yeah, fatty. Look at that. Go back to that current little chub. A little drop swimmer. Hey, Ron, make sure you give us the ratio of stay or leave, okay? Either or. Well, I'm gonna wait for another 30 minutes okay. to put it out there. I understand. So we can evaluate the situation. We don't need to tell them we're going live at eight if we're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just need to make sure. I got you, I got, I got you. <laughs> Look at those waves still pushing. Yeah. My gosh. Also, you guys will see here, I, mean, I wanna show you. When we're throwing these. First um, one on the inside. You got one? Small one. Little dude. Whoa! Uh oh! Whoa! Uh oh! He's in a he's in a bind. Got it? You can help? Yeah, we're good. Not really. <laughs> Wes loves this. Wow! Wow! Yeah! Oh wow! Ah, yeah, yeah. Get him. Easy. <laughs> nice one. Uh, that's fun. Nice one. What's funny, it, what's, what's, what's interesting to me is the majority of the big ones we usually catch, we catch on the, on the hardest current, the hardest current that you have. Look at that. What Chris was saying, totally off the big lake. You know, these fish just roam and roam and roam and look for look for bait, look for bait, and just follow them right into this dead end. And it's basically the same thing you see dolphins do to redfish. Right. They just pin them in there for three weeks before it gets too bad. And I'll tell you what's funny is that dude Vandy and I have tried to figure out where in the heck they go when they bail out of here. <laughs> And I have no clue. Oh man, I'm gonna bind too. Uh oh, big? I don't know. Charge the fence! <laughs> Charge the fence! I'll just keep them button. I I'll don't know. You. Chris, do not fall in that no, white water. I won't fall in. It would really cap an exhilarating two weeks. Yeah, yeah. It came off. We're good. Was it big? I don't know. I couldn't tell. 
took me for a ride. Aye, aye, aye. We are right on the nut of this thing here. Okay. Yeah, those two college kids right there. Uh, they won the, where'd they win the college series at? Uh, Cherokee. Those two won, the, those are, those are, I'm dead serious. Those are, Almost made those the are jackhammer fishermen right there. Get them, Chris! Dude, they're so strong. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's... I think the one kid with the beard, though, he's like 45 years old. <laughs> That's a little one there. Exactly. There's... See, and... Yeah. There's one on your page, but okay. I'm pressing send. Press and send on the Bassmaster Instagram story poll. Okay. And see what the viewers think. Okay. Stay or go to the hospital. I'm enjoying being here. It's very comfortable. It yeah. is. It really is. If, if that means anything. So what I was saying earlier is we're oh using these size one trocar drop shot hooks. Light, you know, ten, eight and ten pound test cigar tatsu and real light drop shot rods. Whenever you're fishing um, small mouth, large mouth, whatever, whatever it might be, when you have an exposed hook point like that, super sharp hook point, it's real important to reel set. You know, you'll see a lot of guys, you know, and, you know, they're up here trying to reel in there, you know, reel them in. Well, what happens when that fish comes to the surface? There goes all your tension in your, in your line. So the proper hook set with exposed trocart drop shot hooks is just a reel set and load up that rod. Uh oh, we got issues up here. Need help, Bubba? Oh, I'll get him. <laughs> wow. That current keeps blowing him back. Oh. That one might be sassy to get hold of. Yep. Both flip them. Yeah. Hey. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, he came off. Do you have one? Yeah. Yeah, I got a crack. There are just hundreds of those in here. Little two and a half pounders, two and a quarter. There's so many in there. There's, there's <laughs> a pile right there. It's every cast. And one of the things Chris was talking about, if you're watching this, it doesn't matter if you're fishing large mouth or, or small mouth or spots. If you notice, every time he pulls the trigger on one or I hit one, you want a reel that slides, that that drag slides instead of torquing on them. You really want, when you pull, you want that line to, you want that drag to slide with it. You know what? Let, me just, let me just throw the, the meat in there. Let me just throw yeah. the machine gun cool. one time. You want me to throw this spinnerbait so bad, don't you, Wes? Right? Oh, right. Why not? I mean, let's go up in. Oh, that surprises me. That's right. We have not been able to power hit them hard. We've shot so many shows up here, umbrella rig, and we're gonna try to do one tomorrow. We caught some yesterday on it, but for now, for the next month, that is one of the only things to throw up here. I cannot believe that.
right under your foot. You good, you good. And I see these guys, these construction workers up here working today, man. Shout out to all you guys back home, or not home, but at work watching us today. There's some guys watching on the computer right now. Their boss walks by, and they, you know, they quickly close the window and act like they're working. Well, and not only that, I'll <laughs> that be honest be with me. you. Shout out to all you college kids that are not in class in a canal with us right now. Uh, where's Zachers? Where's he at? <laughs> Zachers! Look at him! Left, Wes, left! Left. There's Nebo. Right behind the tree, coming down to say hi. Hey, Zachers! Hey, buddy! Wee. Little is. mink. Yep. Cute little guy searching for crawdads. Small. Small, 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 small. I think we're going to answer our poll in a second. Really? Let's uh, let's slide back down with, on the trolling motor on high. Good call. Right? Yeah. Let's do that and creep back up, and then we'll make a call. <laughs> Look at those two, Wesley. <laughs> Look at those two. <laughs> Seeing what we can do. Zell Dangerous, good start to the morning, bud. Absolutely, Zookeeper. We're good. Worked out. Worked out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what? I'll do it right now. Invite anybody that fishes the Bassmaster College Series. Come on out here on Lake Huron, uh, Huron with us right now, right? <laughs> we might end up later on at B-dubs, if you know what I mean, <laughs> Look at those two. They're loving it. Was it still a little bumpy out there? Yeah. Ronnie, tell everybody at home who that is. The guys you're seeing right uh -huh. here, Lucas Murphy and Nolan Hit, Grand Valley State college champs from Lake Cherokee, almost made the bracket. I don't want to bring up bad memories, you know, but you were right there, had a shot on the final day, I'm just saying. The Merdadgum College Bass Fishing studs right there, <laughs> boy. Hey, Zona, 2018 yeah. was the, for college fishing, that was the Michigan's year. What's with, that? With Adrian College. Grand Valley, Michigan's year right. in college fishing was this yeah. year. They showed out. They showed out. I remember my kids fished their first one in June, and they looked at them and they, with the beard, and they went like this. Dad, how old are these people we're against <laughs> in this thing? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, that's probably bigger, huh? Yeah. 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 Let's hold back right here. Okay. This is a gig, right? Okay. Dude hit it and missed it and s gosh. Deeper, huh? Yeah, like really deep. Wow. Get Ronnie loves hanging out with college kids. Totally ditched he us. Does. He's already out of the game. <laughs> Nothing, you're good. <laughs> totally out of the game. Ronnie wants to play Fortnite with those guys. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's terrible. Huh? Uh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I hear my kids say it. I don't know what it is. I was a, I was a Tecmo Bowl kid, Wes. Did you guys fish out there today? <laughs> I don't blame you. 
We had them found five miles south. No. Gosh, that was a good one, man. Was it? Yeah. A little single, too, huh? Yeah. Say it again? Serious? I was too, Ron. You're an easy target right now. When we were going to postpone or cancel 8 o'clock, you were like this. <laughs> Everybody was. We did. We did. I cannot believe we've not caught one. Right, I mean, right. that's like I one of the. I feel the rock. I mean, yeah. I, know, I, I can feel it every time. Like right there. Oops. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Right. For you largemouth guys, how good does that scum pocket look right I know. there? Oh man. Good morning. Good morning. Got a good numbers quota? Starting to get that little greed factor in, though. The fidgety dude. That yeah, one just bounced right. it right there. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh, look how dark one. that one is. Black one. Yay! Yay! No sun. Oh, it came off. I'm going to go to a new color. Okay. <laughs> they're tripping, okay. man. When they swim towards you, uh -huh. I know. They get in that current, and there goes your pressure. Okay, let's go to let's go to a little something brighter, as low as the sky is right now. Um, well, I, I talked about that when we first started. A lot of times, when you go to a little different color, little different color, it'll get them to fire back up. That's the one we caught them on earlier today. Kind of a blue glimmer, smoky shad, glimmer blue. Okay, Fortnite. <laughs> but when when uh, when uh, the Zona show airs with with Al Dane in January, that was the that was the school that we were going to run to, um, and it's staggering. Like it was, I was so excited to get out there, um, but also at the same time, you you have to. I always say it. This uh, this lake is is no country for old men, and it was it was just too bad. We got we got down there, and when we got down there, it it was fishable, but but doing a live in it would have been insane. It would have been just too. The waves were crashing, and the water chalked up, and you could you could weed through them. I think throughout the day, but you were going to take a just a complete beating down there. So made the right call. Under you. Let me go under you. There's one big rock right there. Yeah, right. Right? One really big rock. Oh, no. Don't do that. Go ahead, Chris. I'm gonna re-rig. Okay. I'll kind of go through the. I'll kind of go through the rigging. Catch one, Zell Danger Zone. 
You know what? what what's funny is I've uh, I've taped with Chris before. I've uh, we taped. This is no joke. We taped down at Falcon like five years ago. And it, what was it? The coldest Falcon has got in a hundred like years. Yeah. There were some old time guides yeah. down there that he got caught in an ice storm in Dallas and brutal conditions. Brutal. Brutal. Very tough shoot. But we made a show out of it. We did, we did, we did. We've had some brutal conditions this week. We have. We you ever start to think maybe it. it's us? Yeah. <laughs> So what I'm using right here is a number, a number two trocar drop drop shot hook, and it just kind of lets that bait, that real real small hook, lets that bait be real natural. And uh, but I've been using a quarter ounce weight to let that current flush it. It seems like a three eighths kind of bogs down a little too much. Right. It doesn't look, it looks almost, look, kind of looks dead. You know, I'm a, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, not scared to cross over. I, I was a little bit scared, Ron, of that young Mitch Trubisky that my Bears drafted. How about him on Sunday? I'm just saying. That's my quarterback for the next. 15 years. He turned your frown upside down he like did. that. I mean, I think I, when you got word of what the score was from the Bears and Buccaneers, I mean, I don't care who was in the way. We were going beeline straight through Off them. To the this, water. Yeah, boom. boom. Butter and Jacob said, you might want to get near a TV. We've got a quarterback. <laughs> hey, we got while, we, while we've got some downtime while you rig, here is a question from Evan Wrinkle. Yes, sir. He says, Zona, Zaldane, can you explain the difference in a northern slaunch versus a southern loach? A southern loach? Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one, it's not a southern loach. It's a horse face loach. <laughs> okay? You go to a store, an aquarium, you can buy a horse face loach as a pet. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Oh! Weird, man. They're swatty right Weird. now. Very swatty. Really weird. Another Is that question. On a swim bait? Yeah, a little swimmer. Wow. Weird. Coming from on from Twitter, Melsworth77 wants to know late Friday night game of Uno, who wins? Mark Zona, Tommy Sanders, or Ronnie Moore? Did you say Uno? Uno. Uno. <laughs> <laughs> that is something Tommy plays a ton. <laughs> I've played more Uno than Fortnite. Uno. I've never played Fortnite. Oh there was gosh. questions asking if I yeah. would jump in their boat and play Fortnite. No. I would not. Try to catch you some big and less. We got some meat in the live well, but we'll try to. Oh, nice cast. Hey, here's a, here's a question. I'm gonna get to the poll in just a second when we get done with these questions, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna let them vote a couple more times. But okay. here's a question from someone you guys know. A Ryan M. Uh oh. A Ryan M. Yeah. Related to this show this week said, Has Khalil Mack changed your approach to fishing Sundays this fall? <laughs> Here's what I can tell you Khalil Mack's done in my world. I love Karen Zona. I don't like her, but I have found somebody else too. <laughs> Gosh, man. Just swatting that swim bait. Donk. Weird. Got him. Got him. Big swimmer. Ooh. Ooh. Good one. I mean, locked up, Jack. That's a good one. See, but that is a great lesson. Just start rotating lures. Sure. Absolutely. Nice one. That's so cool. You go through there with a bunch of different techniques. Oh, that's uh, a good one. Yeah. 
that fish. Look how fat Look at it that. is. Digging. Woo. Oh. Easy, easy. Come on. Come here. Come here. <laughs> yeah. Look at that one. Ah. That is a nice one. We'll hang on to him for a pick. We'll let him go in here when we're done. That is a nice one right there. All right. Right back through. I mean, we got us a little bitty old meat locker going right in there. I mean, uh-uh. Oh, oh wow, no! Nice jump. That's a big one, man. It's amazing, man, in the fall, how they just kind of reset and go on the chew. Wow. That's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah, that's decent. Good job, man. There again, I had to keep up with it, with the reel set. Just start reeling, reeling, reeling. Yeah, let that, same thing. Let that drop shot rod load up. Right, you have to keep reeling on them. Oh, that's fun. Nice one, Chris. Good one. Good one. Come here, come here. You're not going anywhere. Come here. I can see where that fish is hooked. And even when I grab the line here, it ain't going anywhere. Again, wow. the choke, choke our hook right there in front of his nostril. It ain't going anywhere. Again, that reel set, man. You feel the bite, start reeling, that rod just goes And that's a caught fish. Whew. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to get off. There we go. Wes, brace your legs. Oh, that's fun, man. That's fun. No matter right. what you've got going on in life, man, oh, fishing cures all. <laughs> Look at the face. Look at the face. <laughs> I'm do it all night tonight. All right, went to a went to a little three seven five. Three seven five. All right. Went to a little three. Oop. Went to a little three seven five. IU Rage Swimmer. And we'll give them a little target right now. We've. You could tell how they're hitting it. Chris was just saying it. Tunk, and then they'll fall. They'll fall downstream. And the only thing you do is start to reel up. Right there. That might be a fish right there. And that IU color you're throwing, I mean, that that right there is a perch imitator, yeah. right? No doubt. So again, this time of year, they don't care, care if it's green, white, right. brown, chartreuse, anything they can get their hands on that's smaller than them, they'll pound it. What's our water temp in here, Mark? 59, a little warmer in the, the, the big lakes, 57. Uh-huh. So you got, oh my, hit it on the drop. Uh-oh. Ay, ay, ay. I'll get you. Do okay. you have one? Yeah, grass. Oh. Hit it on the drop, I'm dead serious. Dude, it was dropping, donk. How many are sitting right oh there? Oh my gosh, so many. It's like you see those. Ronnie, you getting questions ready? Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, fire when ready. We've got one from uh, M. Crick Fishing. He's a fan of Bassmaster Live Watches a lot. I just don't know how to say his last name. But he says he fishes Lake Michigan a lot on the south side, and he usually drop shots with a weedless bait. Like he'll drop shot it, but make it weedless. Is he doing himself a disservice by not nose hooking the bait? Well, what's what's the south end of Lake, Lake Michigan look like? Well, Open water, or is it? it, it the, the problem he has on the south end, that's right, right where I grew up, 
Burns Harbor, Gary, maybe pier, pier area. The prop, no, no, he's good doing that if you're fishing the riprap, because it's gnarly, it's giant. I mean, you look at this, this is just basketball size rock. Yeah. Where he's at is enormous. It's the size of your boat, and those fish are cave dwellers there on the south side of Chicago. They sit in them cracks and stuff like that. So I'd say no. I mean, you know, it, it, here's the thing. If those fish are out of the rocks and susceptible, you want to go to just a nose hook or, you know, an open hook, I should say. But for the majority of where you're going to catch them on the south side of Chicago, um, you, you want it to be more weedless. Dude, I'm going to tell you, them are finesse jig eaters there, too. Big time. And the, the other the thing to add too oh, okay. on that is if you're drop shot in and you and you're you know Texas rig drop shot in a non-exposed hook, just keep in mind when you get a bite that you've got to give them just a little extra yeah. mm, reel down, give them a little extra to set that hook, you know, through the through the worm and into the fish's mouth. So he's he's fine. Again, make sure it's rigged straight and you're good to go. Here's one from the Bassmaster Facebook page. Matt Russell says, a Bears Super Bowl win or your college sons winning the Carhartt Bassmaster College Series Championship? <laughs> a Bears win, Super Bowl win or my kids winning the, college, winning the Carhartt College Series yeah, maybe National the Championship? championship? For the bracket. Oh, I would, the Bears win is like without a... <laughs> <laughs> the, the boys just want a big one. The boys just want a big one. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, the kids won the, uh, the Kevin Van Dam College yeah. Series Championship. Uh, those guys did real good. Um, Lucas and, and Nolan did really good in that tournament. Um, they actually won it like 10 miles inland from here. Z, a question from your Facebook. Jason, Jason Ammerman says he's getting ready to order a drop shot rod. And a two broad or or one in the same, what is your best setup for a drop shot rod? And and do you use a different rod for drop shot and a tube versus like what is your setup? Uh Jason Ammerman. If you look at any of the rods, whether they're the I use the Tatua Elite rods. I know Chris uses the Mega Bass rods. Mm -hmm. Here's the one thing I I I'll, whenever I'm drop shotting, I generally use a seven foot, you know, like a, an inhaler rod to a seven foot three medium light. And as I, oh, oh gosh. Whenever I'm cracking a tube is when I'll go, I'll, I'll go bigger. I'll go to a, a seven foot three and up to a seven foot three to a seven foot six to Tula. Even to a soft bait cast seven foot six. There's some, some seven six, search rods you know for baits like this that i actually really like for uh for cracking a tube yeah generally with the tube rods you want to go above seven foot only because we're when you're casting a tube three eighths ounce half ounce three quarters sometimes you want to be able to launch it and cover as much water as possible think of it like a casting jig rod and then the drop shot rod's gonna be more, obviously more finesse. There's a lot of six ten, six foot 11 drop shot rods, which I'm using right now. Um, and again, you're doing a lot more vertical fishing. You know, the shorter the rod, the quicker you get that vertical drop. Um, and then also too, to consider, um, you know, if you're, you, you only have a budget for one rod, pick a, you know, around a seven foot, medium, medium right. light, and you could adjust your line to you know the, the the technique you're wanting to use, so you could use braid to floral zero stretch. That basically gives your your you know small drop shot rod more horsepower. So, or go straight fluorocarbon. That softens it up for drop shotting. You got another one. We'll just throw out there. Um, Mitchell Bo Brecken from your Zona's Awesome Fishing page Facebook. Mitchell says, when targeting fall. Northern Michigan smallmouth, are you searching for the bait with your electronics or just features on the lake and locations? What would be your simplified method for finding the smallmouth in the fall? Where That's from Mitchell? To? From Mitchell. The, the one thing I can tell Mitchell is if there's no food, there is no, and, and this week, I'll tell you what, what's been cool about this week. If, if you don't find bait right now, they're, they're just, they're non-existent. Yeah. They're non-existent. 
Like the one spot that hit, that Chris and I found out on Lake Huron, when you catch them, they're just ooh, just blowing big bait, like big. five inch bait. Yeah. Um, and you can go a quarter mile away, half mile away, and have the exact same the exact same cover and structure and bottom contour, and never get a bite. If, if and so to answer that question, the thing I look for the most right now, birds. Birds. Good tip. Bur whenever that you that Chris and I've caught them this week, or when I'm up here and I'm fishing with the kids or Van B goofing around, if you see seagulls something's fixing to happen. And that's not um, just the Great Lakes. That's everywhere right. in the fall. You know, a lot of guys down south, you know, it's still real hot down there, but yeah. going into fall, those birds will tell you exactly where to start. You know what's, what's, what's something else about that is how incredibly, how incredibly fast they'll leave. Like they will, they will roll in, in, in a matter of an hour. There could be you know, there could be a uh, hundred smallmouth, and when that bait when that bait rolls, it is amazing how fast they'll leave with it. Yeah, yeah. Z, you just mentioned it. I'm gonna stay inside now. Went a little now. while okay. fishing certain baits. Yeah. Then you switched up, caught some fish. Fred, that's all we got is just Fred from Twitter. When do you know about that internal clock? Fishing a spot, when do you know it's time to change lures? Five minutes, 10 minutes, or when is it time to change locations? Fred how just asked you, that? Yeah, how do you just determine that? The internal clock is on right now, Fred. <laughs> um, here's the thing, we got a lot of meat off the bone here, and there's definitely another pile to catch here, but this is also a deal. It's clicking in Chris's head right now in mine you you need to let these rest you let these rest an hour or two you know let let them tell you they're telling us stuff right now uh-uh they're telling us to up. stay jack that might be a good one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah that's a good oh one. yeah those jerk bait fish are a little yeah, better yeah they are yeah they are t-boned it yeah they are you got you want me to get him? I got it. You got him? Yep. Is he live well worthy? And uh, I think he is. I'll tell look at nah. I mean that thing is hooked, hooked, hooked. Chris, I don't know if he is. Ah, careful. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. oh that's trouble. That fish was not coming off. These are the Trocar TK three hundred. That's a good one, dude. TK three hundreds on the Vision one ten plus one. But I like round bend. Um, I know a lot of guys disagree. But I've been a round bend guy my whole life, and and um, these are the TK 300s, which is the round bend. Some guys like the he'll make the team. The EWG, yeah, the EWG styles, which is the TK 310. But man, when I'm throwing a jerk bait or top water, a lot of times I'll just slap at it, and I feel like those round bend hooks, you know, get them in the, that cheek meat or up up underneath the jaw a little better. So that one was hooked good and wasn't coming off. Good job. Yeah, that's he's, a good, that's he's, a good he's, one. Uh, yeah, that's just he'll make the squad. Not coming off with those hooks. And these are a size four. This jerk bait's 110 millimeters, the Vision 110 Mega Bass. And it's the plus one version. It dives down four, six feet. Table Rock SP color, purple back, blue on the sides, chartreuse white with an orange belly. Smallmouth love that color. That's a good one. Dude, how do we how do we leave here? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Look at that. Check that out, Wes. There's some meat in there. And we will release well, these fish. On the, They're doing on good. On the pole, guys. Yeah. What's that? Stay or leave. Yeah. Just wanted to give an update on that Go pole. Ahead. On the Bassmaster Instagram, 40% saying stay, 60% saying leave. Woo. Look at Bandy. Bandy's like, don't leave. Do not let's, leave. Let's check Twitter real quick. Let's check. Let's see if Twitter says the same. Let's switch check oh, no. Twitter. Oh no. Uh oh. It's all right. Let's roll up there. Twitter. Forty-six percent stay, fifty-four percent leave. So Ooh, we're on wow. that teeter totter. Make sure you get to that Bassmasters Instagram story. Vote on that. 
We will know it's, after the commercial yeah, break. It's and still on Twitter as well. <laughs> yeah, it's still. It's got a lot of West in it now. Sure. Huh? Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll take a little bit of time out, and uh, we'll have a group meeting here in a second and be right back. Thanks for hanging with us on Alive presented by Trocar. Yeah, it is. As this day goes on, it's going to get better and better. here on Zone Alive. It, 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 it has been a trying morning. It's been a trying month <laughs> in the bass fishing world. If you know what I mean, boy, we got a little bit of gold. Got a little bit of gold right down here. We got we, we got some we got some magpies in there. We got a big bag. We got a nice stringer. We're just gonna take a picture. We're gonna let them go right back in their discharge. Um, we're trying to make a decision. If you've been with us, you know we've been what well, we, we've been pounding them, trying to talk ourselves into leaving and going out in the big lake. The, the negative of going out in that big lake besides it beating the fire out of you right now, um, it's not, a, it's not a, a quantity where we're able to fish. It was a quantity where we were gonna try to get to, but it was just blown out with mud. But we're, we, might, we might make a decision here in 30 and do an early commercial break and gamble uh, on the final hour of, of, of Zone Alive. If we if we catch one out there, it could be a absolute giant. Uh, but it's it's a it's a high risk deal getting out there, and we're gonna get beat up a little bit. So I do want I mean this. Uh, big thanks to tuning in today, and I hope you're sending Ron Moore some questions. Uh, hashtag Zone Alive. Trocar was kind enough to to uh, r really kick in a bunch of uh, really really great prizes, and uh, I appreciate all that and all of you. Zona, a couple people. Yeah, but during the commercial break, a couple people were basically saying, "Hey, we got to figure out how to block websites because in the Menderchuk School District, everyone's keyed up for Zona Live right now, and no one's getting anything done." I love that Menderchuk School District. <laughs> we might be doing a Zona Live next year on Menderchuk with Mandy. He's the only one that can get us out there. <laughs> <laughs> It has, since we've got out here this morning, cameraman Wes just said it, it is, you could feel, you could feel the, the, the front has pressed out and that cold air is behind it, but it's supposed to warm up drastically tomorrow. Go ahead, go ahead. You're fine. Sure. I'll stay tight. But you have to, on you know, whether it's a, you were a little hemmed in today. I think cameraman Wes wants us to commit to stay in here. <laughs> During the commercial break, he gave me his thoughts. <laughs> I was listening, Wes. Ooh, that north wind yeah. is getting cold, cold, buddy. Cold, cold. <laughs> cold. And the fish feel that too. The fish yeah. feel that pressure change and man, gotta eat, gotta eat, gotta eat. Two weeks from now, what's it gonna look like here? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Like two days from now. Right. You know, friends, I'm just gonna talk, start talking about things. Sure. Just because that's what I do. 
Cook it Ron. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, every one of you that probably follows Bassmaster.com and, and, and the fishing world basically knows uh, exactly what's really what's gone on in the in the in the fishing industry the past you know two weeks and I wasn't going to talk about it today but I, I sometimes just can't help myself um, it's been a really uh, emotional across the and, and I know that sounds goofy but it has been the reason why it's been emotional is people are making life decisions whether you're Chris Zaldane, uh, whether you're Greg Hackney or Kevin Van Dam or Drew Benton or Seth Fight, I, I can go across the board. And and you know, Chris and I've Chris and I've talked about it a ton. You know, the last two weeks and really the last two days. Um, and and here's how how I'll give you my take on it. There's no right answer or wrong answer per individual and that's one thing that I said to Chris I said you know he said it, man do you think anybody's disappointed what I did or what this person did or what this person did and and my take on that's been whenever you're making a life or and I don't want this to sound goofy but whenever you're making a life or a career decision that impacts your family nobody has the right to judge you on that sure it's just a fact mm -hmm. um but i know you've been I, I will tell you the the guys that stayed at bass you and and drew and you can go across from to sure. seth and seth who else and bill, uh, Owen bill owen and steve kennedy duke i give you guys a, a heck of amount of credit because it uh yeah i mean we decided to stay we we took all the information that we had you know of course everyone's Everyone knows that, you know, this, this new league starting up, they sent hand-picked invitations and, and hand-selected a bunch of guys across the elite board and, and a couple in the FLW tour. And a lot of guys hopped right on and said, sure, man, let's go. A um, couple things behind the scene that, you know, a lot of the public will never know about. And Has there been some of that, Chris? Oh, there's been a whole <laughs> bunch of that. I mean, friendships have been busted up. Um, it's a career decision that, you know, it's, of course, you, we all got to do what's right for each other. And, but in my opinion, generally speaking, with all the information I had, I decided to stay with Bass. And simply because immediately it affects me, it affects my wife who fishes the opens. It affects all my good friends that fish the college level, the high school level, uh, team tournaments. I truly believe that, you know, Bassmaster Elite Series, the Bassmaster Classic, those those tours and that tournament are going nowhere. And for a 13-year-old kid, 12-year-old kid, I grew up watching these guys. I said, I want to get there. And I saw the vision, saw the vision, you saw the vision, and uh, made the appropriate steps and sacrifices in my life to get to the Bassmaster Elite Series. So. Well said. BASS has a has a has tours and, and programs for anyone, any skill level, any age to, you know, take those steps, take those first initial steps and, and ultimately, you know, qualify for, you know, classic in the end. But man, I, I got to tell you, I just a little disappointed in some of the guys and, and, and you know, I, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm, we're just, it feels like we're dealing with abandonment issues here, you know, this week. Well, and, the, pro the problem on that is no matter from your roommates or, or things like that. Right. The reason it's so emotional is we've all worked together for five, 10, 15, 20, you know, that's, that's the hard, that, that's the hardest part of the, the emotional is. side. It, of it really is. It really, really is. And I'm here to tell you, you know, the Anderson family, owners of Bass, I, I got full faith in them. And yes, there will be some restructuring. It's going to be a whole new tour. I got full faith in them and the decisions they make, and I'm I'm proud to say I'm still a part of BASS, and I'm really excited about the future, and I'm not just saying that. So, um, and for those of you who are fishing high school and college and teen tournaments, the Elite Series is still something to aspire to be, and still an area that uh, you know, still a space for us to have, and and it'll always be there, and so will the Classic. Somebody asked me with a lot of the, the guys that are leaving, 
Um, here's how I'll just give my opinion on it. It'll be my last thought is whether it's 2020, 2021, 2030, um, and I believe this is, I wish anybody, anybody that's made the most brutal decision in their occupation the best of luck uh, that you did the right thing. And, but the other side is, if Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers leave the NFL tomorrow, there's still going to be a Super Bowl, which always has been, or always has been the Bassmaster Classic. Long past cameraman Wes Miller and Ron Moore covering this, there's going to be a Bassmaster Classic and a Super Bowl of bass fishing. Yeah. And uh, if Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers aren't in it, show's still going to go on in some way, shape, or form. All right, back to this discharge thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Old Seth Fighter, shout out to Seth. He made an awesome, funny post, man. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and to quote him, the show goes on. <laughs> uh, it does. You could totally, totally feel the wind has shifted. Yep. That's got a lot of west in it. Whew. But the other, other last thing that I'll say, and I believe this, with the current state of everything in the next, in the next three years, there will be massive, massive opportunities and influx for new anglers. From, True. from them two dudes right there in three or four years yep. to young guys coming out of high school into college, college to fishing big tournament trails. That If there's one real, real to me, really, really glaring thing that will happen with all this, glaring, we will end up learning a lot of new anglers yeah. in some way, shape, or form. They got rods out. They got rods out. Get those rods back in! <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, no, no doubt. There's an excellent opportunity for up-and-comers to, you know, to, to set a goal and reach it. And that, honestly, is the purest form of the future of our sport. I mean, that is the future of our sport. You can't deny it. So it's very important yeah. to provide those kids the opportunity to compete at this level. And, you know, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years from now. But without those kids, where does our sport go? Is that a danger zone? You need to catch Yo, one, right? You, need to, you really need to catch one right okay. there. Got him. Big oh, him. that's a big one. Yeah. I got me an umbrella rig, my boy. <laughs> Did you hear him? You oh. got to land it. Gosh, it's a dandy. That's what the umbrella does. Wow. wow. That that's is a, big a dandy. One. Uh, easy, easy. A lot of hot wires right there, Z Train. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that was a big one. That was a really big one, Wes. That was a big one. <laughs> that was a big one. was a five. Look at my poor baby. No, that sucked. Gosh, did he stop it. I bet. I bet. Is that a danger zone? Yeah, that was, big keeper. And, that was as big as that jerkbait fish. Hey, man, you're going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Huh? You're going to be all right. It's going to be all right, buddy. We need Michael Middleton to pull out the sad Bassmaster music. Did you hear him? You gotta land it, he screamed. You gotta land it. Hey, to be honest, I'm so glad you made that pass. Was, you called it! I was like, hey, please cast one more time for me. Get this shot. 
Wow, that was a really good one. <laughs> yeah, it was. What, that was, it was literally big. the best oh. fight of my yeah, lifetime. Yeah, it was big. Dude, that's, that's unreal. We, we went through there. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was a horse. That was a horse. I mean, I think, I mean, they're just, it's fall, man. They're pouring in here yeah. by the minute. I mean, there's four, five, six pounders back here that'll be in here any, at any at any time. Let's see if it drops out. Just a couple. I kind of put the coals to him a little bit. <laughs> That's what that thing. That's what that thing catches. Gosh, what a bite! Uh. He was Instagram worthy. <laughs> oh, I got him. We just don't have to say that you lost him. I mean, like we. I got. I got it. It looks good. I mean, look at that mill right there. That's like where you'd see Freddy Krueger. Am I right? <laughs> Sirens. <laughs> Gosh, what did that bite is. feel like? Dude. Just stopped it. I thought I had bottom for Ooh, a minute. Oh, the best kind. The best kind. Dang it. All good, all good, all good. That sucked. Hey, getting strong on the pole. Really? I'm going to the promised land. Saying the go? 58%. I just went to five, yo! Look at Wes. Don't go, don't, don't go. <laughs> Heck no, please, seriously. Z, don't go. 55% on Twitter, so it's still leaving. Okay. Let's work up near the fast water and we'll make a decision here in a minute. It's 1120, you got still got time. Neil, it'll be fishable, won't it? Yeah. Uh-uh. That Big might be a good one. Oh, oh yeah. Look how black that one is. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. I'm just gonna hold it right yeah, there. Yeah, hold okay. me right there. We got we got plenty of time. That current's ripping. That fish is digging. That's a nice one. Black one. Again, we're on the Great Lakes, and there are a ton of zebra mussels here. So that 10-pound cigar tatsu is critical around, you know, those mussels. Got, got him. Big one. <laughs> Umbrella rig, that's what. <laughs> oh, wow. It's a nice double. Yeah. They're fighting that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's a good double. That's always fun. I mean. How'd that bite feel? Stopped it. Stopped it. Look at that. Dandy, man. Whew. How about that? Will he make the team? Um, I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Yeah, he will, won't he? Yeah, he oh, will. Oh, yeah. Well over 20. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, 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 yeah. What a butt! I wish every one of you guys watching at home could experience this. I mean, it's almost every cast. Almost. I'll tell you, that's amazing. That's so, something so cool for somebody at home. When you go through an area and think that you've cleaned it out, uh -huh. we're actually now getting a little bit less bites, but bigger. Yeah, quality. Fun. Yeah. Dude, I mean, ripped the world out of my hands. I mean, do you see where I'm... You see? <laughs> I Look see here. Vision. I mean, <laughs> I hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
sorry about that. He hit it and it went slack line oh, down. Oh man. I know. There's a nice size rock, like yeah. just off. A the, little patch. Yes, yes. Yep. Like right there. Yeah, like right where ought to be a bite. That is so Mortal Kombat bite. <laughs> Just get over here. <laughs> uh -huh. I like this little dance we're doing I do too. here, right? I do too. I like it. I do too. <laughs> Come on. This is one of the amazing, amazing things about this time of year is I'm throwing a Strike King titanium umbrella. We've shot a, a, a gazillion shows with this. And it's got little 3.25. I went with smaller ones than usual, 3.25. Um, Rage swimmers in IU, but to go through here, to go through here and get bit, get bit, get bit, and I mean, he almost took my face off with that jerk bait right there. I mean, almost just ganked me. Um, to go through here and catch him drop shot and catch him on, a, on an Ocho, he's been throwing his jerk bait today, and and you're like, wow, okay, we've got, you know, we've cleaned him out. Two of the biggest bites of the day have come in the last 10 minutes just switching gears to something like that. And the other thing, if you're really watching what I do with that, I throw it on 20 pound Seaguar Braze X and I throw it on a frog rod. Uh, the frog rod, the Tatula frog rod has a real soft tip and I never ever, when I'm, throw, when I'm fishing for smallmouth with an umbrella rig, I never ever use braid. I don't know if they feel it, I don't, I don't know, but the, that fluorocarbon, not only that, it, it, it lets them get it. It lets them get it good. It's almost the same principle of when you're cranking. Uh, when, when, whenever I'm using braid with, a, uh, with an umbrella, it, it's when I'm in real, real, real heavy grass, stuff like that. But 99% of the time, it's a 20-pound it's a fluorocarbon. And the other thing is, when you're reeling it, I always say this, is is flare flare that reel handle you're you know a slow roll slow roll slow roll and then pick your reel handle to make that umbrella rig breathe and that's when they'll react to it no matter if it's large mouth spots or small mouth uh just flare it to make that thing pulse talking about pumping it and you flip it flip right. yep that's right like a spinner bait yeah. right that's all it is is an oversized spinner yes. bait how long until we got to make that decision <laughs> it's 11 29 ah, it's in the ball is in your court ah, oh. Oh, Zach. Do you want to, hey, Z, uh -huh. do you want to answer a couple questions? Yeah, absolutely, because I'm get trying to play in my head what we should do. Yeah. Chris, this question's for you from Zach. I mean, dude, we just, we just caught three great big ones. I mean, let's oh. knock it. <laughs> so you're saying you might veto the fans? I, 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 Maybe. Question from Zach. Question from Zach for, for Chris. What are some secret slash unknown West Coast finesse techniques that don't maybe get the pub on the Elite Series that like the drop shot does? Or... Man, I, you know, just recently they put a name to it, but Neko rigging's a big one. 
Um, that's when you've got a small four or five inch straight tailed worm. Straight tail, that's the key. Straight tailed worm with like a tungsten nail weight in its head, either 3 16th or, or, or 16th ounce. Or I'm sorry, a 32nd or 16th ounce. That, that's been a, a really killer, killer technique. I've been using it for years and years and years. Um, drop swimming, what I'm doing right now, I mean, just a small swim bait, very, very light drop shot weight and just kind of pendulum swinging it back. Um, why, you know, why do, do that instead of a, like a jig head? And simply because it keeps it off the bottom, you know, keeps you from getting snagged. So drop swimming is a, a big one. Um, and I mean, that's, that's about it. Troco has got a new hook coming out, a Neko rig hook or a, you know, wacky rig hook. It's got two antenna little uh, kind of uh, um, weed guards on it. And I threw it at that AOY term and I caught one of the biggest fish of the tournament there. Um, this is a really good hook for wacky rigging and long shank on it, you know, for that style of fishing. But yeah, I'd have to say Neko rig and then it drops when. Speak up, Ronnie, speak up just a hair so I can hear. Nate wants to know, Helix or Solix and why? Benefits of both. Man, I... Nate, question is Helix or Solix or both? Man, well, I am... The best of both, yeah. What's that? The best of both. It, here, here's what I can tell you is the... The, the Solix units, I've, been, I've, I've, I've goofed with them and been with people that use them, and they're incredible. The, the problem with me... <laughs> I'm a little bit of a creature of habit, and the, the, the entire system of this really came from the old Humminbird 1199s, um, and, and they added mega imaging in, into this one. I, I can turn it on, I can go, and I know how to use four or five buttons, and to me, that's critical. I, I'm, I'm not good at learning new tricks. I try. Here's one from... Frank Ramsey wants to know, maybe in your opinion, or just overall the best bay in Michigan to fish for trophy smallmouth, beta knot, sturgeon, traverse, saginaw, or any others? That like you would, trophies? I mean, yeah, maybe not quantity, but quality. Ah. <laughs> um, you know, gosh. For me to fish for trophies, you've got to somehow be connected to, to Lake, either Lake Michigan or Lake Huron. It has to have some sort of a connection, a, a stream. If gobies get in it, okay? If gobies get in it, you're fishing for trophies. If gobies are not in it, um, they're built different. But really, a lot of the inland lakes that are fed that are truly fed now by Lake Michigan, every one of them has gobies. So, just make sure that it connects to a great lake. It's amazing, we were talking about that yesterday, just the impact of zebra mussels, you know, over the last 10 years, and then in turn the gobies as well. Right. I mean, look at our tournaments, so it's, you know, Elite Series, Bassmaster Elite Series, St. Lawrence River, I mean, that first win, I think Brandon had the first time we went there. I mean, what was it, average 20, 20 a day, something like that. And now look, I mean, look at the weights now. We're catching yeah. 20. Set. What, did, what did little Matt Lee end up with, 26 plus right. pounds, pounds? I mean, every single year it grows like a pound. It's, it's unreal. So if you think about that, if it steadily inclines like that 10 years from yeah. now, oh my gosh, that state record you were talking about yesterday? 10 pounds. Z, 10 pounder caught on a night crawler. Yeah. I mean, we are not far off from catching 10 pounders. The other thing too is, I mean, for like a five or six pound fish, like on Lake Ontario or out here on Huron, the mouths on them are tiny. So that tells me they're real right. young fish and just overgrown. So, you know, those three or four year old fish will live to eight, 10, 12 years old. And those ones that have the potential, you know, to get up to those nine pound weights in my opinion. So you're uh, just saying they're just obese, obese oh high school, dude, whole high school yeah. bass. Here's what's, yeah, not going I, I watched Bassmaster Live when you all were doing, when you guys were doing the St. Lawrence River, and I, I remember tournaments, Vandy and I fished tournaments where if you caught 17, 18, 19 pounds, people were like, wow, you catch that now, 
You are going home shamed. Absolutely. Shamed. It's unreal. I think KVD won in 2017 yeah. with 93. Yeah. And then there was like three guys, or not, not three, there was like five or six guys that had 90 pounds this year. Like, it's like no one person broke it last year in like five or six, but. Uh, Sean Boyle wanted to know, you're a tube guy, Zona. What is your favorite trocar tube hook? Um, I'll be honest with you. Maybe the weight as well. Oh, I ain't getting that out. You got a pair of scissors right down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'll be, the, I'm going to show I'm going to The show new them. wide gap one. I'm going to show them the tube. The new wide gap one for throwing a stupid tube to me is one of the best hooks there is. I throw a stupid tube a lot. And it's just, you're, you're able to throw a stupid tube where you can't throw an open hook one. Now explain yeah, to there's people, the difference right there. Maybe some southern people that don't know what you mean by stupid tube. You're not just saying that as an adjective to no, disrespect no, the tube. You. Stupid tube. Yes. <laughs> That's the one he's talking about, that EWG style. And a stupid tube is basically a, a Texas rig, Texas rig tube, but using you know traditional tube jig style head. And this is just your traditional style trocar tube head. Awesome head. It's got the elongated lead here. So when that tube falls, it just kind of glides down. Chris. Chris. Thanks, Vandy. I'll let Mark do it because I yeah. don't do much stupid, stupid tube rigging. So, Z, you, you thinking about it? Well, I'm thinking about it right now. It's in my head. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. So, here's the difference right here from a regular tube that we have all kind of, kind of grown up. You know, put it in through the bottom, pop the eye out, open hook tube, which, you know, I throw that. 75% of the time, but a stupid tube in, in, in cover like this or grass, even docks that have brush on them, you'll actually take the point of the hook, okay? My buddy Terry McWilliams almost won the classic on Lay Lake years ago, and you're gonna go through the bottom and pop it through the top, okay? And then you're gonna pull that up over the eye of the hook, okay? And then push through. That's a stupid tube. To me, that is one of the deadliest, and, and you're, you're, able, you're able to fish a tube in places that notoriously you just can't get a, a standard open hook one. But the whole key is that wide, that wide gap hook right there. That's it. That might be the best taste of bait of the year. I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. It's been fun in here. Let's gamble on it. Woo! Let's gamble the on it. The fans won. Woo! Let's gamble on it. Fans I won. Hang gamble. on. We got to start packing stuff. I love gambling. We got to start packing stuff. I can't take it. I got to try to catch a great big one. So, hey, do you want to stay on camera while you while you pack up? Yeah. Or Keep asking questions yeah, while we're packing. Right. We'll do that then, yeah. We'll ask questions while they pack up. Okay. Got to get some stuff situated. You don't want to just go running out there with everything scattered like it is. We'll ask a, we'll ask a few more questions. Oh, Ronnie, killing it. Ronnie, you're killing it today. You are, man. You're shy. I got to make up for missing the last zone alive with Fighter, which was out of my control. But someone from Twitter, I don't know how to pronounce that at all, uh, Acra Zone, maybe that's their alias, I don't know. What depth do you prim primarily focus on in October and November for smallmouth? People often think, you know, maybe deeper than normal, but sometimes that shallower deal is... Is Tell them what we're going to do tomorrow, Mark, what our plans are for tomorrow. The question is, the question is, and it's a good question, do you target deep or shallow? And, and here's the problem. It's both. It's, it's truly both. But what happens a lot of times is, is you'll get a push shallow on that initial cold front like we're on right now. And tomorrow, we're going to just go shallow. We may only get 10 bites tomorrow but we're gonna go throw umbrella rigs in three to seven foot of water 
But if you catch 10, they could be the biggest ones Big that swim. Ones. Big ones. Zeese, a, a fan wanted to know, obviously line sizes change and differ, but for you, you've got different colored braid backing or braid on rod. So when, I, when you were setting up yesterday, getting some line out, you had multiple colors of Seaguar Smackdown from the, the high-vis green yep. to pink to a uh, smoke colored, maybe even like a moss green. Why, what's, when do you choose different colors? Um, well, it's, uh, that's a good question, actually. That is like really, uh, if I really, really, if it's subtle, 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 subtle bite, I'm not gonna lie, these fish out here, they're biting, they're biting. Um, I don't, you don't need a, 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 a high-vis braid to, to know, bing bong, <laughs> I got a nibble. <laughs> um, so you can go with a, with a more stealthy color, you know, a, a more of that moss green. But the more, the more that I need to see and feel subtle bites, the higher the viz line that I'm going to use. And, and I'll add to that, that Seaguar came out with a new high-vis green here at ICAST that earlier right this year. That's and good. it's a really good technique up north and down south, but uh, skipping a weightless worm up underneath docks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To see your line, you know, it's falling slow, falling slow, weightlessly, whether it's five-inch Senko, Ocho, whatever it might be, you will see that that nudge, you know, a lot of times, you know, when they're finicky, sometimes they pick it up and drop it. But when you see that nudge, that's when you cinch on them and, and you know, and, and catch those fish. So, yeah, the high vis green definitely skipping docks 100% of the time. Look at this. Can you tell what we're going to do? A <laughs> tube, a coffee tube, a coffee tube, and a coffee tube. <laughs> right? <laughs> Z, we got one more question before we set up our move. Go ahead. Folks want to know, everybody's watching from a different stage in life. How do you know, as a co-angler, when you're ready to make that move to the back of the boat, or from the back of the boat to the front of the boat? How do you know when to make that move internally? It's an interesting I, question. That's a good question. Go ahead, I, I actually Chris. fished the Bassmaster Opens as a, as a co-angler for, for several years. I drew guys like Ish Monroe, Robert Lee out there on the Delta. Wow, uh, Robert yeah, Lee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, how about that? Yes. Yeah, he's a man. Um, and uh, I kind of knew, you know, I kind of knew I wanted to take the plunge or I, I, I figured I'd do pretty well. And, you know, out of the guys I drew that week, whether it be three guys, four guys, whatever, I mean, I felt like I could hang with those guys. So at that point, you know, and it's just simple as like fish count, how many he catches, how many do you catch, you know, and then you pay close attention from the back of the boat, what that pro's doing. And if you could hang with that caliber, take the plunge. I mean, I was fortunate enough in, you know, 2006, I, I won a Bassmaster Open and, and uh, won a boat back then and actually used that boat to propel my professional career and took it one step at a time. And that's, again, that's another thing I'm thankful for at Bass. They provide a platform for any any age, any, any, any skill level. And um, the most important thing, though, is taking it one step at a time. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to the pro, the pro side to be a pro. You know, it's... Take it one step at a time, and, and the signs, the signs will come up. One thing I want to say about that is covering covering the opens all year. Right. We we have an open championship coming up next month, and all the all the co-anglers that qualify for that, they don't fish to beat the pro. No. They fish differently than pro. If the pro's yeah. flipping a jig, they're not going to try to compete with that. They're going to figure out how to catch them from the back without just sure. fighting the guy in the front like you're beating him. Sure. You know, and the other side of that, in, in all honesty. You know. You know. I know that sounds, you know. Yeah. I know that sounds yeah. simplistic, yeah. but if you're in the back of the boat with a dude that's a hammer yeah. and you can hang with him, yeah. you know. You know. You and here's know. the other side is, you truly know if you're not ready. Right. You do know. But I always say, and I, 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 I did a blog about this on, on Bassmaster.com, climb the ladder. Yeah. Climb the ladder. Win your Tuesday nighter. Yeah. Win your local circuit. Win your regional stuff, and then move on. To, don't don't skip a rung of that ladder, right. or that ladder will cave in on you. Rumble. It will cave in on you. Can you tell we're getting ready to go yeah, for a little bit of say. a journey? Do you want to idle out with us real quick? <laughs> Let's do that. Is that dangerous? Yeah, Let's keeper. be safe and. Send him up, let him know how long we're going to be. Yeah, it's just okay. a commercial, you know. Ronnie, good point right there. That kid is out of his mind killing it today. He is 
Um, we're going to run. Okay. It's not a far run. It's about three or four miles. Um, but it's going. Be, it, there's still a lot of residual stuff out there. I could see it. I know cameraman Wes Miller is not that happy with that decision. I love you. I love you. But high risk, high reward. I mean, if we're going to go down the last hour of zone alive, let's go down catching. I mean, trying to catch a dad gum big in. All right. So we're going to idle out of here. Thank you, everybody, for, for hanging with us so far. Let me adjust that trolling motor. Hold on, guys. Okay. It has been a fun morning. I really did. For everybody that's joining us, I was like, oh, my gosh. We got on the water, and it was still dark. It was dark 30, and we were running, and I could whoosh, 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 and I'm like, all right, it's fishable, but I don't know if it's tapable. And that, there's a big difference in you know, when, a, when a, you we've got a camera guy and a crew that you yeah. got to care for their safety. Because um, I don't recommend this place to, you know, you, you need to come out here and be prepared for this, what this lake will throw at you. And this morning it threw it at us. Um, but it, the, the, the one thing that I learned out on the Great Lakes here is this was fun. I mean, we caught a, a really big bag of fish and, and a bunch of fish. Give those kids some love right there. Yeah. I love you too. I love you. Are your girlfriends watching? Probably not. Exactly. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah. My wife's not watching either, probably. She probably hang with it. Was... Say it again. My son got yelled at for watching in class today. Dude, how um, old is that guy? Uh, I know. He's, he's 47 years old. Beard, he's 47 years old. And he's a lumberjack. Um, so we're going to make this run, and uh, we'll be safe getting out there. Let's try to go catch the biggest one of the year. Zona Live is brought to you by... Seaguar. Boat US. TH Marine. And by Bass Mafia. The party just started. Yeah! So oh, that's a wet. Yeah! Yeah! Ugh. Nice one. Just a nice one. Let that one go. Look at Zachers! Look at him! That is cute as a button. <laughs> oh, how about that? Come here, buddy. Yeah. 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 We good? All right, we just got out here, and my first throw with a half ounce tube. Very, very first throw. Not a giant. Little guy, but that's a good sign. They don't travel alone. Those don't travel alone. But these fish out here, guaranteed, these fish don't see lures. I mean, they don't. Dude, I can't believe it. I threw out, it just goes, donk. I'm gonna keep those paddles down. Yep. Maybe we should have listened to the fans earlier, yeah. Ron. Water's good and the color. Dude, I swear to God, I just had another one. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Oh, let this happen. Yeah. Let this happen. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on, funny feeling. Water's got I can't great believe that. color. I threw out it, it goes, donk. 
Yeah. See how pretty the water coat? There he is. Yep. There's Begging. another one. There's another one, Mark. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, big one. Oh, gosh. That's a giant. I oh, hit Mark again. Gosh. Hit yeah, Mark yeah, in the yeah. middle one. Yep. It's going to go. It is. It's going to go. Ooh. What a move. What a move. What a move. What a move. You see how blue that water is? Where we were going to do so. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, I mean, come on, boy. Let's do Zone Alive until 5 o'clock yeah, tonight. Yeah, no kidding. Boy, those kids got themselves a new fishing hole. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. Easy. Come on, come on, girl. Oh my gosh. Stay pegged, stay pegged, stay pegged, stay pegged, stay pegged. Wow. That's a giant zookeeper. Wow. <laughs> wow. Second. What just happened? <laughs> Second oh my cap. gosh. <laughs> <Look at> that. <laughs> That's a big wow. one. Wow. Look at that I'm one. I'm He's on. got one. Yep. Oh, they're here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, another good one. <sighs> Wow! <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> Woo! Big one. Look at that thing. Oh my god. You need me? You need me? You got him. I got it. I got it. Giants. Giants have moved in. Yes. Oh, look at this one. Another big giant one. Oh! <laughs> wow! Give it up! <laughs> yeah. I just had one. Dangerous look one. Look at that. Yes! Wow. Damn. That is a giant. Let's start another Holy side here. Holy cow. I just lost one. <laughs> okay, let me set the folks up real quick. Real quick. Go ahead, take it. Let's just hold back. Okay. <laughs> Here's what we got. You see our mapping right there? That is a hump. Comes up to 10 feet on my Lake Master, okay? And we're right on the perimeter. We're on the northwest side of that hump. North, oh gosh, I thought you had one. And it's surrounded. It's got real, real big rock. It's got a wreck on one side of it. And the other, the other gig here, the other gig is, it's one of the rare places on Huron. Let me check those real quick, Wes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's having a time in there, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, just having a time. <sighs> and just, just listen to the listen to the viewer. Just listen to the viewer. It's one of the rare places on Huron that you can uh, you'll hook milfoil. Like there's very little milfoil out here. Can you believe that? I, when I threw it out, I'm like, there's no way one's got it right now. They're on the grass. There's one underneath us. This is, this is on. Wow. What a move. What a move. Thank you, fans. Wow. That's so cool. Those were big ones. We're going to catch another great big one. One of the keys. Look at that one. Look at that. There's bait. They're all Look over the graph. One. That's a giant on the graph. Look at that. Ho, 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 ho. Food everywhere. Got him. Uh -uh. Off the graph with a tube. Giant. Another good one. Oh. Giant. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the dangerous oh one. Oh, my gosh. The dangerous one. I mean, choke that tube. <laughs> it's gone. Wow. Wow. Come here. Yeah, come here. Good job, come Bubba. Here. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, Good job. Yeah. Good job, man. <laughs> Did he get that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just had one. They are just, here, just had man. one. Just had one. 
<sighs> Got him. Yeah. Biggin, 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 <laughs> biggin. <laughs> what were we that doing staying in color, there so yeah, long? Absolutely. No, he won't make the team. <laughs> They're loaded here. Unreal. Hey, it's all dangerous? Yo. You want to shoot another show Zoom here tomorrow keeper. morning? Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Throwing a, uh, throwing a three and a half inch green pumpkin purple flake coffee tube but I'm throwing it on a big piece of lead. I got it on a half ounce, half ounce head. Oh, I just got smoked. No, you didn't. I just got smoked. They're loaded here. Can you believe that? Wow. I just got smoked. Something real big is going to happen here. Yes, yes, this yes. This is the land of the giants. Yes, it is. Grab that trout. We're only getting two. Yeah, yeah. All right. I know. I, I they're all over. I'm just the trying to keep too. us. I'm trying to keep us off of that hump. This fish are right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? They're sitting right there. There's bait. Bait everywhere. Oh my gosh. Bandy's marking them. <laughs> I'm not scared. Hey, dude, I'm not scared. One for the good guys here, boy. Oh, he oh, came no. off. He came off. No. <laughs> All directions. Yep. <laughs> Got him. Oh, that We're might big, be a big man. one. <sighs> Yo, oh my yeah. gosh! <laughs> Get in there! Giants! Oh my Giants. gosh! Every this one is of them's, unreal. Every one here of them's comes, a big one. Oh. oh my gosh! I mean, dead gum late to your own stick. Look at that oh. thing! Oh. Yeah, yeah <laughs> bud. Oh my gosh! They are choking it. Yeah. Oh, come here! Come here! Look at that wow. thing! Wow. Fresh off wow. the lake, wow. man! Wow! Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. That fish has been living out there, out in the big lake. I mean, gonzo. But it's Woo! been a trying couple weeks, but I mean, come on. <laughs> Those two. <laughs> I think, we could throw, yeah. I think we could throw a couple of the ones in the one side back. Yeah. Wow. I love you, Zell Danger Zone. Oh, my zone. gosh. Every direction. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Wes did not want to listen to the fans. Uh-uh. <laughs> Sorry! Uh -uh. Dude. You already, you already spread us out like me and Ronnie are going to MLS. They're in here so good. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. There's got another one. Oh my gosh. Oh. You're kidding me. Giant. No, no, no. Nope, nope. Little just a normal, girl. just a just normal a size. Fish. Whoa! Came off, came off. That's all right. Okay. That's all right. Probably had a bunch with him. <laughs> Probably had a bunch. <laughs>
but that's that it's staggering looking at that mapping you never i mean neil and i fished a tournament here back in was it 96 oh i know uh my my boys were not born yet um and we were in here but you had no mapping you just looked at a you know you go ahead go ahead go ahead you just looked at a map you know and you good yep Oh my gosh. I know, dude. I know. What They're a all time. Right. Is that hump to the right or the left of us? To right the left, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Vandy, good call, bub. All right. Uh-huh. Unreal. Are you three-eighths in? Three-eighths. Three okay, yeah. okay. Wow, 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 wow. There's one right there. Hold on. It's a little one. Look at one. that. There. Um, that it's is a little, little one on the meter. You gotta let that school yep, set yep, back up. Yep, yep. They're I think all... a lot followed those fish out, man. They're, they're all over the graph. I got time to shoot. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Great. And what's funny is you look around us. I guarantee you, there's another 50 of those schools right now around here. Wes and I caught, when we were here, we caught them way out by that buoy. I think we're gonna get a hold of a six pounder here I do shortly. Too. I do too. I mean, this average is, Sick. I mean, those are big, good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over yeah. fours, you know. Say it again. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of these casts, it's going to completely lock up. Big, big one. Yeah. There's current moving. You see I mean, the sand grass we're hooking? I'm hooking a lot of sand grass. Huh? That first one was a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. We just busted up that little school, but yep. there's got to be just pods of them moving exactly. around this hump. You got to let them just reset. couldn't believe it that first throw when I threw out it just goes dunk oh. and I'm like come on <laughs> but one of our questions you know finding finding smallmouth in the fall one of our questions we had earlier right where Chris and I were setting the hook on those right where we were setting the hook there was bait all over the graph the whole graph was lit up Launch one right over Wes's. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right over him. Huh? He's gonna catch one right there. Unbelievable. You can do a 25 pound bag out here oh, today. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. 
What's different about Huron from if there's anybody that, you know, does Erie or, you know, I even consider St. Clair a, a great lake or Lake Michigan or Ontario, really what's different about Huron is comparatively from, from like Erie, you know in like Erie you can go to Peely Island and catch bass and you know you can go to Dunkirk and uh -huh. catch bass. What's different about these, these are swimmers. These swim way more. You could fish this bay like we're in right here for days on end without a bite. It's more of a seasonal yeah. timing type gig, yeah. Because I think a lot of the salmon trollers, a lot of the salmon trollers that come out of the harbor tell me in the summertime, man, we're catching all them nuisance fish you, you guys like to catch, all them smallmouth, and they'll catch them out there over 100 feet of water. And, and I, I truly believe that these are the same fish that just come in here to, to do their fall feed. All right, I'm gonna get back on that drift. Okay. Drift paddles in. Well, that was a flurry, man. Oh yeah. But I really think the majority of the fish in Huron compared to, to you know, I think fish on Erie live a lot of their lifetime on reefs and migrate from reef to reef wherever they're Come back that way a little bit, Chris. Come back. And they live on those reefs, what, about a week at a time or so? Well, and, and the, you know, it's just more targetable. Right, it, right. It's, uh... Gosh, there must be a ton of current, dude. There's a lot of current. I cannot I even think, get yeah, back to that yeah. waypoint. Clear water and current. Hump, some grass. Like it's throwing me off. And bait fish, right. Right there. Yeah. Gosh, there is no telling how many there were there, in that yeah. school. Yeah. Um, but it just doesn't seem like they have a, okay, they live here, right. where you have that on another Great Lake. those two. That is so awesome. I wish I was in college. I might hang out at their dorm with them. Yeah. <laughs> really. Wear my varsity jacket. What'd you let her in? Machine shop. <laughs> Gosh, that school busted up. We'll find him again. Uh -huh. Oh, that was an incredible flurry. Would you say it was only going to be like a bite here or there? So cool. We got 45 minutes to relocate them. We'll find them. Yeah. We'll find them. That's the biggest Smalley stringer we've caught oh, on live. Oh, gosh. But it <laughs> happened in... Seconds. Four minutes. Seconds. Awesome. So they were on this side of the hump. What's that? They yeah. were on this side yeah. of the yeah. hump yeah. that's yeah. here. They must be like all over. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you look right. at the waypoint, right. Right. I mean, look, they're, they're all just all over. Come on, come on. And the only, you know, one of the only negatives of Huron compared to uh, of the, the, a lot of the other Great Lakes, these fish are hard to graph here idling. It's almost like you just gotta, gotta fish, fish and fish them. and fish. Right. Sand grass. Mm-hmm. Feels good. Yeah, real good. 
Huh? Every time I come up here, we're taking Good photos. for you, bud. Good for you. All right, I'm going to launch up on top of it. Okay. Okay. And we're fishing. If you're if you're kind of kind of dial this in, we got about a 12 foot hump, surrounded by about 18 to 22 foot of water, with scattered grass, a little bit of rock, and there's a little bit of wood out by that buoy further out. There's more wood out that way from wrecks. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. That is Holy cow. I saw that, Ronald. <laughs> Man, I want to fish too. Ronnie, that was so close. <laughs> it was so close. Dangerous one. I'm going to drag the top of that thing. Okay. Been a fun live. We got 40 minutes, right? Is that right? That school is so going to be back there in the next right, hour. Right. Kind of the upwind side of it. What's that? The upwind exactly. side. Exactly. The... There's got to be some good current. Scratchy, bottom's all scratchy. Yeah, oh yeah. Grass here and there. We'll go around you, Neil. How cool is that? I wish I was in college again. Do you know I went to a two-year community college for five years? Did you? <laughs> I went to a community college for almost two years. Then I won a boat. Done. And then Yep, 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 oh, yep, yeah. yep. We've got yep, all that yep. to play We got with all too. Yeah. that to goof around with. Uh -huh. Okay. Again, we're going to have a couple uh, couple more questions. Hashtag Zone Alive. Trocar giving a bunch of prizes away. Karen Zona giving some Z-Packs away. That's great. I mean, it's literally going to be. What's up? This is the last two rocks. It the is, The last bud. hour of Zone Alive, so. Not forever. Not forever. Never, no, no. Just of just this bait. year, Look at the bait. Look at the bait. Oh, yeah. Never so forever. Much of it. So. It's hard to prompt people to ask questions because we've got a bunch already in the kicker. So you guys just let me know when you're ready. I mean, we can knock out some now if you want, or Not we'll save them for yet. the last. I got to tell you, my guy's Al Dane. I mean, Dunn went off for like 10 <laughs> minutes right there. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Seeing him on the graph, biting it on the fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one you dropped on. I know. And he choked it. I mean, swallowed it. Z, you ready for a couple? Yeah, let her fire. We've got one from the Bassmaster Facebook from Dan Shine. He's uh, he's in Michigan as well. He said, how deep do you fish an A-Rig? And do you ever slow roll them? You know, he's had issues trying to figure out what line to use with it, whether it's braid or fluoro, you know. Great question. Like, that you know, was Dan Shine. Dan Shine. Um, I shot a show with Mercer right down the road an hour from here probably five years ago and we were catching them we were catching them out in 20 to 30 just raking the bottom as slow as you could turn it and when one would hit it it was like your arm get electrocuted they'd hit it so hard and the water was in the 40s really 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 cold um but you know i've, I've taped other shows up here where you fish it like like a spinner bait you know you're fishing it um, you know, three to five foot of water, 
and burning it, you know. So the deeper you go, generally the slur is bait everywhere. Uh -huh. um, the deeper you go, the slower you go, but don't don't ever, ever overlook. I caught a great big one with Zell Danger Zone yesterday <laughs> up in, you know, two feet of water. If that. Here's one, a scenario from Amanda Masters on the Bassmaster Facebook. Oh, oh my yeah. girl. Amanda <laughs> Masters. <laughs> I'm giving her a shout out. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. Springtime spawn for smallmouth or fall. Which one? You get it you get to choose one. Which one's your favorite? Springtime smallmouth or fall? Yeah. Fall. 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 Yeah. The reason why they are so pissed off. Um it's almost like in the spring. I, I, the only thing I'd say different, I like the real, real early spring, 45 to 55 degrees. But fall to me is the... I mean, every one of these fish we're catching here, early fall, I mean, they're choking that yeah. tube. I mean, not playing with it, down in the crunchers. Right, And that right. just tells you they're just, like you said, they're pissed and they're eating anything that moves because they're trying to get it while the getting's good, you know? Here's one from our boy EK, Eric Kafka. Oh, he you sent mean? this one to me. He didn't get in on the yeah. on the sweepstakes prizes, but he just sent me a text with this question. He says, what does it say about the Bassmaster fans that when given the choice of small ones, but a bunch of them, not saying you guys didn't catch big ones there, but small ones or a bunch of them at the last spot or choosing just to, for that big bite here. You know, you got two scenarios, two ways of fishing. Which one are you doing? They chose the big ones. I see what you did there, EK. The, that, 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 uh, the, the fans went big today. Yes, the fans yes, went big. Absolutely. Thank goodness. Wind is laying. Totally laying. Wow, look at that clump right there. Holy oh, cow. Oh, yeah, look at the graph. I don't know if you can see it back there. What's okay. that? There's what they're on right there. That's that, it. Isolated that's that right clumps there. of grass. Right there. Yep. Clumps of grass right off of a hump. That's the business. That is the main gig right there. Keep going, Ron. You're good. Someone asked. I gotta. I gotta find it. I just scrolled away from it. But. Okay, here it is, Bob yeah. McCumbie from your Facebook page. Bob McCumbie says, what advice would you give someone that's never fished the Great Lakes? It's not like you just pick a bank and start going. Right. They're big bodies of water. How do you even go about taking a trip from the south up here or just learning one in your backyard? Uh, it, everything we're fishing right here is on, on mapping. I mean, we're fishing t uh, basically a 12-foot hump and just doing circles around. You gotta be some, near some, generally near some kind of a contour change. Even when, when the dangerous one and myself caught him on Sunday, you know, 10 miles down the road, we were near something. It wasn't big, it only went from 11 to 13 foot, but they used that little, that transition as, as a highway. Ditches, a lot of ditches, you know, like largemouth relate to points but these big smallmouth relate to ditches, little depressions, grass within the depressions. The other thing too, when you start fishing the Great Lakes, is to bring rain gear, whether yeah. it's raining or not. Yeah, no bring doubt. Bring rain gear. So Z, I know you'll feel you'll feel good about this, but back in North Carolina at Joe Gibbs Racing, oh, yeah. they're watching Zona Live That's right now. That's awesome. Yeah. I know a bunch of those guys. Uh -huh. Joe they, Gibbs Racing. They asked. Which one are you more afraid of, sharks or clowns? Sharks or clowns? Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna go with clowns. Clowns. I really am. No doubt. That one and it just scares the fire out of uh -huh. me. The new it or uh, the old it? The new one. The, the new one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What's his name? Pennywise. That's the one Pennywise. I don't like him. Yeah. That dude's bad news. Yeah. All reaching that hand out of the gutter. Uh. The sewer. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm looking for another one. Well, here's one for the crew. Wes Miller, Ben Oliver, uh -oh. Vandy, and myself. Crew question? 
A crew question. Keith wants to know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad does it suck watching them catch them and not be able to catch them yourself? <laughs> What he doesn't know is that this is a one-day live shoot, and we might be up here for yeah. two or three, maybe more days. Then you know we just yeah. slide on out. Yeah, it's, you know. Yeah, we'll be catching in two hours. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a zone alive, just not aired. <laughs> yeah. Those two. Look at them Instagramming. Fortnite and. Yep. Gosh, I wonder if we ought to. I wonder if we should idle up upwind up, of that up, even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do that. Guys, let's do that real quick. We're just going to idle. Go back to where that yep, school is yep, hanging. Yep, yep. Keep sending in your questions. Maybe we'll sneak a few more in at the end of the There's hour when they yeah. conclude. Yep. Zone Alive, hashtag Zone Alive, hashtag Sweepstakes, as they're going to idle up. Good job, Bubba. That was fun, man. Good. <laughs> Good job. That was awesome. Hey, that was awesome. Yes, it that was. That was a spectacle. Yes, it was. If we were fishing a team derby, I'd have been like, whoa, what's going on over here? <laughs> and that's all it is right there is that hump. Yeah. That hump yeah. right there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for hanging with us. We were really, 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 really worried this morning. We, yes, we were we worried. Were. Everybody was worried. But it all works out in the end. Yep. It sure does. We thought we were going to be canceling everything, canceling Christmas. <laughs> Everything's crumbling. Not the case. I'm gonna slide on the top of it just a hair more. Uh huh. All right, 30 minutes. Six pounder. Six pounder to cap it. We got a bunch of fives, don't we? Yeah. 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 Drift going again here. That's the other thing too about the Great Lakes. It doesn't look like there's current here. It's not a river situation, but there's so much water out there. Just the volume of waters. Sometimes you even have a tide, you know, like a, the moon actually pulls the water in and out, but there's some gnarly current going on. Yeah, when and he those, was fighting, when you oh were fighting man, those, yeah. the boat was just plowing and it of course it the wind blew overnight so it's just Look, we're kind of spinning get them out there fishing get them out there they fishing. are get fishing them, get aren't them, get they them west, yes them, they are get them out there fishing those are my kids friends let us get some of that hot apple pie <laughs> they'll let you know if they hook one trust me <laughs> come on baby Gosh, it's like we drug that whole uh -huh. school. They were on the grass, everywhere. they were on his everywhere. grass, they were, they'll reset here. Yeah. We know where those clumps of grass are. Hey, Yo! Got a question from a viewer. Okay. Uh, Mick Maples wants to know, please explain why and the reasoning behind it for your rapid fire hook set with your tube. Uh, Mick Maples? Mick Maples. Mick Maples? Um, to me, fishing a tube, way different from a drop shot. And why I say that is a drop shot, you just got one, you know, you got one hook. That boy. Oh, that's probably It's so a far giant. out there, dude. <laughs> Right on our little yep. hook. 
Hang on, Mick. I'll get back Hang with you on. one second, Bubba. No idea how big he is, Wes. Oh, Just a nice yeah, one. another Just a giant. Nice. That's a good one. Gosh. Um, I, I, I really believe that. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, guys. I'm turning the what boat What they here. do is they get. Oh, that is a Look big at that man. One. Gosh. What a day. Look at him. Like, I'm convinced, this is no joke, that that fish has not seen a lure, a lure. anything. If you look in his mouth, see how, if you look in his mouth right there, you see how clean it is. That fish doesn't have a single spot on him. Um, to answer McMaples, if I would hit him one time back in the day, if I, if I just hit him once with a real heavy tube, they come up and they just come. Like he's one of the big, Vandy's one of the biggest old school crackers when one bite just whack, whack, whack. And what you do is you get them to open their mouth and get it out of their crushers to where that hook point digs. Right, it's a good point. Um, redfish are notorious for that. They'll. They'll get a bait in their crushers, and you never get a you never penetrate them with a hook. A smallie's the same way. He'll he'll lock on a tube so hard. You know, like when you got one in the live well, and they'll bow up mm -hmm. where they're like. Arr. Right, right. I, I really believe they get the same way with a tube, to where. Huh, 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 huh. Yeah. To where they they lock it so hard. And then all of a sudden they come to the surface and go like this. And you've never got a hook point in them. And when you crack them one or two or three times, whap, whap, you begin to open up and that hook goes. Oh, I like fishing back here. Yeah, it's nice. It is really comfortable. Yeah. Let her rip. <laughs> Let her rip. That's a good catch. Have at her, Z. That's it. Fun day, dangerous yes, one. Yes, sir, it is, the keeper. For my guys right there. I love them kids. I love Grand Valley State University. <laughs> Dude, you know you're a hardcore fisherman. You come out on a day like this. I mean, it's raw. You can't feel it at home watching, but it is raw. That one was on the fall. Was it yeah. really? There's got to be a pile yeah. of them right there. Fishing, what, 14, 15 feet of water, but yeah. it comes up to yep. about, what, 12, yep. 13? Orange one's straight east. Yeah. We're right in the middle of it. Right. Yep. That triangle there. That's it. You know what's weird is that one dude that asked that question, you know, what do you look for? So we're on this hump right here, but then if you don't catch one for like a half hour, you're like, oh gosh, where do I start again? Right, <laughs> right. right. Where, where does this begin? Right. Hey, Z. A oh. uh, question from a viewer at home, uh, Dave M. from Canada. Right. Says he keeps hearing the word slaunch, slaunch this, slaunch that. As the inventor of the word, has it become a part of your dictionary? And can you fill in the history of it where you first found it? Um, he's a big fan from Lake Skagog. Um, oh, yeah. Um, it, Dave it, M. Slaunch actually came from a friend of mine, Chad Grigsby, and I. Uh, Chad fishes the FLW tour, one on St. Clair. Yeah! <laughs> Nice. How about that hook set, everyone? Yes. Yes. Probably another came freak off. that came, it off. came off. It came off. Oh, there's one underneath it the boat. Off. There's one under the boat. Yep. Oh, get gosh. Him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Oh, That's a good gosh. one. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. Um, Slange came from was derived from a gentleman. Chad Grigsby and I used to fish tournaments together, and this gentleman was a, was a fisherman, and I mean, he was a slouch. He was a slouch. I watched. I, 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 
He ate a, a chili cheese dog once <laughs> and was just wearing it, just wearing it. It was everywhere. And I looked at Chad. Chad looked at me and he said, man, dude's a slob. And I love the guy. I said, no, he's kind of like a haunch, almost like a combination of a slob and a haunch, which is a slouch. And that's exactly where it came from. Huh? You're saying Dave M, the guy who sent the question. Yeah. Not no, no. The the word slaunch was made back in like the, the mid 90s. Wow. So not original. Well, huh? Gosh, they are so here, dude. Didn't, like, isn't there a song, a catchy song that you sing with slaunch yeah, yeah. or that's. I'm not doing that right now. I can't <laughs> do it. It is a catchy song. Slaunch, slaunch, here comes the slaunch, 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 there goes the slaunch. So bad. Zia has some fans at home wanting to know about uh, running big water. Not only like... We did it today, bud. May, maybe a story about stuff that you've broke before in the past, but also how to prepare your boat for running big water. I know um, you got to beef it up and tighten down the... You know, one of the... One, actually, what's funny is Ronnie and I were sitting in the parking lot last night at the hotel and we were tightening everything down. But like we did that Kong, Kong mount, KVD Kong mount commercial for TH Marine. Those mounts are made for this lake. I mean, they are bricks. Um, you, the one thing you don't want to jack with ever is what we were in before we went live today with a boat that you, you know, the number one thing, you make sure your bilge pumps are working. Throughout this day, those bilge pumps have kicked on and off, on and off. If you get caught out here and you nose a wave, you better make sure you've got something. And here's the thing, even keeping a manual one in the boat to just drop on the floor with a hose, you know, you don't, th this lake here will kill you. This doesn't just hurt you here, this will kill you. And, and, and having from your you know, your jack plate tightened to your uh, uh, and, uh, spare bilge pump. You just don't launch here and go, hey, we're going fishing for the day. Right. Hey, since you like yeah. either or, and that's like your favorite game. I do game, like either or a lot. I would like it too if you, you know, if I created a game as catchy as that. But since you created that game. Well, but you want to play either or? Here's an either or from Chris Flay. Nine pound smallmouth on a tube. 15 pound largemouth on a swim bait. Ooh. Wow. Nine pound smallmouth on a tube or a 15 pound largemouth on a swim bait. I'll I feel let like the, the tube aspect's I'll kind of the, spinning I'll, I'll let the dangerous after. one go first. A 15 pound largemouth is a big, big fish. So I'd totally go but, nine pound smallmouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, where I grew up, 15 pounders are caught. I mean, but Those two. you never see nine pound smallmouth. So I got to go with the nine pound smallmouth on a tube. Yeah, I'd go nine pounds smallie, no, no doubt. No doubt, yeah, yeah. My biggest smallie's right at eight, and I and that thing scared me. <laughs> I've got like Where? seven, I got seven over seven. Wow. You caught one of those on a zone a lot? Caught one on, on a, a zone show shoot. last year with yeah. Ayler, right down the road. Creep over this right. Where was yeah. your eight at? What's that? Where was your eight? Uh, Buffalo. But I caught one in Buffalo. I had a camera guy one day almost break the New York record about 15 years ago. But I caught one alone out there, and I sight fished it. I thought it was a carp. I was up shallow on the Canadian shore on Mercer's side, and I caught one. I didn't have a scale that I looked at, and I thought, that is the biggest one I've ever caught. I don't, even, I don't, know, I don't know what it weighed. We've covered the gambit. We have today. We have. The fish gods smiled on us. I believe in the fish gods. They tested. They, they tested, tested our resolve us. early. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. wheels, gang. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> I am not lying. The wheels were coming off of the bus at 7:30. We were down. We were down the way from where we're at here, probably eight miles, and and it was, it was. The wind was completely different direction this morning. 
and we got down there and I looked at Ronnie and I said, we need to pull the plug on this. We either need to pull it or get somewhere for shelter, which thank goodness for the, for the discharge, it, it saved us. Um, and we were all bummed because yeah. we were fired up. Uh, did you mark one? Yeah, little one. Um, and what's bad is we were, we were starting in the discharge. Correct. We and then we had to leave. The, right, there was a barge coming in. Yes. And then it worked out. Hey, 9 to one's not too bad of a time slot. No, 9 to one works. It all worked. What a fun show. Fun day. You ain't going in, are you, Vandy? Ooh, yeah, but <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> it's so cool. Vandy and I took second in a classic here back when we were those kids' age. Yeah, right. <laughs> literally, literally, like a hundred yards that way, and to come back here and 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 shoot stuff and have fun and goof around and catch a couple big ones. I think about those things a lot, a ton. Good times. Nice grass. Yeah, really home. nice. It's that just sticky enough. Right. Just sticky enough. Slide over to the left, guys, yep, and yep, yep, get back yep. on those two juicy points. Yep. Gosh, I wish I would have listened earlier to the yeah. folks watching. I'm such an idiot. Z, I'm, I'm glad Plan B and C did not work out yesterday. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a lake that we thought about going to. We thought about going to Long right up the road. And, but the, the thing about Long is you're just not going to catch a four pounder. I mean, we've got, I mean, we've got a, do, a dozen over uh, at four oh, yeah. over now. Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. I've learned a lesson. Coming out here and doing a live is playing with fire. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is hard. It is to playing nail it. with. Right. It is high risk, high yeah. reward. Yeah. Gosh, I bet Mercer's happy. His team is the Kansas City Chiefs. I'll say. Did you stay up for the whole thing? I Zona? watched the whole game. Same. I watched How about the, that zero on the on the play clock, and they get it off and convert on third down? Right. I'm just saying. It shouldn't have even happened, but. My, since my boss is a Kansas City Chiefs fan too, I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> that my that my homies is the really the really deal. I'll launch one on top of it. Okay. Gosh, there's so many schools around here guaranteed now. Oh yeah. It's like they're just coming. Again, I mean, water temperature is 57 degrees and right. dropping here. Right. Question from Cabot, Arkansas, WGM. Yeah. Okay. Is the zookeeper nickname going to stick? The zookeeper? The zookeeper nickname that Zal Dane's been saying? <laughs> the zookeeper nickname has actually been around for a long time. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it has stuck. It's been around for about 20 years. You're good. I'm sorry, guys. You're okay. Zookeeper. Want to take over? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to bring us right on top of it. On top I mean, of it? Get right sure. on it. Sure. 
I know I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home tomorrow night or on Thursday morning. Yeah. My kids will be like, hey, can we drive back up to Lake Huron? <laughs> they have caught them some out here. So we're, yeah, we're positioned upwind from this hump here. And that just gives us the, you know, the best chance of making as many casts as possible on top of the hump. And I think we're just going to slide back yep. and get on top of it. Oh my gosh, replay through the hooks or the fish catches today. Holy cow. <laughs> You're having a time over there, ain't you, Ron? <laughs> Just got a uh, fan question from one Bass Gifts, which is the account of Chris Mitchell back in Birmingham helping this thing roll along. And he says, why isn't Dave Mercer's favorite football team, the Toronto Argonauts, is he allowed to have an NFL team? That's a valid question. Uh, I know he you, spends Mer half his time in Mercer, there. it's it's in Mercer's big deal with the Chiefs is is uh, he was a Joe Montana fan. Oh. And when Joe Montana got traded to the Chiefs is when he kind of latched. It is odd for a dude from Toronto to be a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Fans are wanting to know at home, this one's from Rusty Harper, but are you fishing deeper? People would assume you are because of how big the water is, but it's not nearly as deep out here that we're fishing from what you were in the discharge, correct? Um, actually, it's deeper in the discharge. Yes, yes. yes. The yep. discharge yep. drops down to 30 foot of water. They dredge it out for barges. Um, this gig out here is, you know, we're, we're fishing 12 to 15 surrounded by 18 to 20. But it's very, you know, what's what's weird about out here where we're at is it's very, very featureless. Yeah. It's, it's slow, there's no real steep, you know, what what what's holding them here is grass and bait, period. Just think of it as a big, subtle, just a big bay, a sand bay, it's all sand bank. And then there's a couple little depressions with one high spot. It's a good little stopping place for a fish that wants to cruise up shallow. But there's a lot of good grass patches in here. We're seeing bait, yeah. you know, elevated up off Lots the bottom. We're starting to get up on top of the hump where we've not casted yet, too. You know, the goby endemic, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, they eat gobies, but they've been eating bait fish, yeah. alewives, and shads, no I doubt. mean, for years and years and years and years and years. So that cycle will never, ever change. And that migration happens now where these, all these bait fish start moving to the backs of these Yeah, because those ones we were catching on Sunday, those were bait eaters. Uh huh. Those were not. Chris pulled one, pulled bait out of one's throat that was, I mean, it was that long. Half an inch thick, man, just a meat wad. Gosh. Bombs away. You know we're going to find another pod of them today. Oh! oh. No. <laughs> Broke it off. Muscle. Yeah, muscle got him. Z, we got a fan question go about ahead, retying. Buddy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just go kidding. ahead. No, go ahead. Mess. So we have a fan question from Rob. Rob wanted to know, do you like to throw an Alabama rig or an umbrella rig early in the year just as much as you do in the fall, or is it just kind of your... Do I like throwing an umbrella rig like, in the spring or the fall? Yeah, like this when, when I really like it. When that water temp gets below 60. Spring or fall? Either side, yeah. Either yep. side. Climbing or falling. Side. Yeah, climbing or falling it, under 60. It seems, in all honesty, it seems it catches more in the fall. And that might be just because they're grouped up more. Um, I catch less, but I catch big ones on it in the spring. 
um, for anybody at home, for all my Great Lakes or my, all my smallmouth heads, what, what I've caught them on out here for the last week is a Strike King Coffee 2 Green Pumpkin Purple Flake. If you only want to own one color for smallmouth, that's the dude right there. That is the dude. Three and a half inch Green Pumpkin Purple Flake. It's a good um, color. It's a... Uh, Dude, that's a clean. Might have been a fight. Might have yeah. been a fight. Um, but it, it, that, that umbrella rig to me is the best search tool. You know, it, 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 you get tired throwing it, and I throw it entirely too much. But uh, gosh, it finds them fast. So fast. Even if they don't bite it, a lot of times they'll show themselves. You know what I mean? They'll, you'll see them, then you can go back at them with stuff like this. When it comes to stuff like this, like your tube, yeah. the, a second part to Rob's question was yeah. straight fluoro, or do you ever go braid to fluoro for a tube? Dangerous one, and, and I've been watching all week. He loves the braid to fluoro, and almost all my buddies uh, throw a, bla a braid to floral, but I don't, I, man, I throw eight pound or 10 pound Seaguar Braze X. Yeah. Um, the longer rod. With a longer rod. See, I'm using the braid to fluorocarbon, so smack down, 20 pound smack down to 10 pound Tatsu, but I've got a shorter rod, kind of shorter, stiffer, so I can get those real crisp snaps, you know? Zero stretch in that braided right. line, I get those real snappy pops. But, but my problem is when it, when I start really cracking them, uh -huh. cracking stuff like that, I'll start. I, I'll I will <laughs> I will hard. start doing too much damage to. <laughs> uh huh. Right there. Let's uh -huh. slowly ease back. Yep. Into yep. It. Yep. Yep. Hey, Ronnie. Yes, sir. You've killed it today, bud. I didn't mess up. That's the biggest thing. No, you've killed it. <laughs> I did. Vandy always kills it. Yeah, and Ronnie, you kept yeah. it clean. <laughs> now, we were just being vague with my mistakes before. No one knows about that. Ronnie so got I'm... too excited on, on, the, on Zone Alive with Davey Hyde early in the year. He I'm just got saying, a hey, little too excited. Hey, you know when that, that sad face I made earlier when we were going to have to nix this whole life thing? Yes. That's just because it's so much fun. So sometimes I get a little carried away, but that's bass fishing. Ronnie so, went full-blown Dart League Tuesday night. Yeah. It's about as, like, I get amped up for either or. Gosh, what a great ending. What a great... Yes. Uh, oh, the viewers, yes. a big, big nod. And troopers, man. Those two college kids, oh, them a big nod. There might be two bass boats on this fishery within 50 miles of us. Oh, no, I guarantee you there is not another bass boat on Lake Huron yeah. within 100 miles yeah. right now. I promise that. It is not the day you want to be out here. Got a little bit of sunshine here. But that's why you said in your preview story that this is why you wanted to come is because the weather does stink in the fall, hit or miss, but magic can happen. Tragic to magic. Just gotta stay with it. That's all it is. You're so done with that. <laughs> A little too deep for 110. Wow. That sun popped. Wow, through. wow, wow. They were definitely on the front windy no side doubt. of that point. It makes me want to fish the northeast side of that right. hump. When we're done, when we go off air, we'll go fish that. Sure. Let Wes Miller get some hot apple pie. <laughs> Q 
huge, huge, massive thanks to Eagle Claw and Tro Car Hooks. Yes, absolutely. For letting us do a zone alive today, supporting it, big time prizes. Yes. Big thanks, Chris Mitchell, everybody at Bassmaster.com, Karen Zona for handling all what, whatever stuff that everything she does, <laughs> just being her. The scorpion lady, I love that girl. I truly do. I miss her. Won't you ever do that to me, boy? Ron Moore, Ben, Vandy, Wes, everybody back at JM and Associates. Biggest, you, my friend, Chris Zell, dangerous one. The Love kids you, from Grand Valley State University not fishing today. <laughs> Most of all, all of you that have watched today. I mean this sincerely. I'm not sure where we'll be next fishing, but it'll probably be in about another month with another Zone Alive. I honestly thank you so much for watching. Zal Danger Zone? I'm ready, Bubba. Come here. You want to <laughs> let a good too? Let's yeah. release a couple let's, of these. Exactly. Yeah, let's, let's let a couple go. Let's let a couple of these bad boys and go. Then we'll do a picture for the... <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is the small side. Yeah, we just want to hang I on. Mean, oh, we'll hang look on. at that. This yeah, we got is some the small pies. side, I think. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Look at the day we've Beautiful. had. <laughs> That's that one you just caught. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean those are the small ones right there. Are they we'll really? let him go. Unbelievable. Let me get over here on this side. That was the small one? Yeah. Got four big ones over here for pictures later. Awesome. And just to show you the day we've had. Awesome. Pretty fish. Lake here on bass. Oh. What a day. What a day. Oh, man, they're feisty. I can't even get my fingers around them. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just roll through that footage back at JM. Go through some of that footage, man. Yes! How fun. How fun. What a time. The party just started. Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Look at that one. God. <laughs> oh, wow. A nice double. Look at that. Wow! Oh! Wow! Give it up! I just had one. Good job. Good job, man! <laughs> wow! 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 Unbelievable!